This is Snake. Can you hear me? Good. The mission is simple. Put your geek pants on and infiltrate Foxhound. If you need backup, contact Ken and Chris on their codec frequency. Ready? Snake out. Friday the 13th? Oh. That, that was the chore? That was the chore. Because it's a shitty movie. I like, I don't know. I like Friday. I don't. I think, but we will discuss. I think part of the problem is that I watched it literally like right after I watched Halloween. Yeah, see? I saved Halloween for last because so, it's my although, favorite horror movie of all time. Yeah, okay. So, I I never watched Halloween all the way through. What? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So oh, well, like, I'm, I'm pumped to dig into that one. Right. Um, I I realized that I'd seen the clip of the ending. Okay, where he falls off the balcony. Just before that. Okay. Where like she's actually actively fighting him. Yeah. Um, and then he gets shot by Loomis. So then when that scene started to happen, I was like. Oh, oh, the ending is coming up. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Well, I kind of... I know how this ends. All right. <clears throat> uh, and then Friday the 13th, I never watched that all the way through either. Mm. That was old. But this, I actually hadn't even watched it at all. I just knew the ending because I watched the second one first, right? Right. Because the second one does a recap, and then that's what I... Yeah, I started I mean, the movie going like, well, first of all, it's weird because they don't show Jason with his trademark hockey mask. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's just a burlap sack. Yeah, it's a so sack like, mask. What the fuck? And then, uh, like, I was just talking about the box cover, because uh, we had to rent this movie. Yeah. <laughs> right? I had to get a note yep. from my mom, so that... Actually, no, she had to go there, meet with the, the rental place, to be like, my boy is very responsible, he can rent any movie he wants, as long as it's not porn. I have no machetes in the house. Yeah. He won't copy anything from the movie. That's right. He's very responsible. Mm -hmm. You can let him write anything he wants, except for porn. I'm trying to think back, like, first horror movie ever. First horror movie that I've ever seen. And it's somewhere in between Jaws and The Blob. For me? I went in with a bang. A fucking bang, son. Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> Street 2. That's the oh, yeah? One. That was your first horror that movie? That was the first one. I was like wow. four, three or four, and it was literally one of those where it was like, okay, well, we're watching a scary movie. My dreams. <clears throat> so, you gotta go to bed. No, Mom, I can watch a scary movie. Are you sure? Because it's really scary. I don't want you to have nightmares. <clears throat> Which is ironic, because it's about a dude killing you in your nightmares. Right? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 Mom. I'll be totally fine. Totally fine. I think I got into the first... Uh, Freddy scene was so shit scared, closed my eyes, kept them shut, fell asleep. And then probably didn't sleep properly for a couple of, maybe about a week after that. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, see, horror scared me for a long time. So like, I, now I'm a huge horror fan, but like back in the day? I'm, I'm a bit more, I'm more of a, I'm a horror fan, mm. but I'm not into a, like I'm not a gore fan. Mm, there. Horror. Hey everybody, we didn't forget that you were there. No, we Actually, were just we talking. Did. We did forget. We, uh, oh yeah. We did forget. But the more important thing is we remember, and we're here, and we're here to welcome you to a very special Halloween Geek Pants. Ooh, the icons of horror. The icons of horror, the four big ones from the 70s and 80s. Episode 52. Episode 52, this is the perfect time to reboot, mm-hmm. because of the 52 DC, never mind. Anyway. It's funny though, we're not rebooting, but this can cast involves a movie we actually already discussed on our third episode two years ago. Yeah, 
That's right. Which is cool. Which is cool. Halloween Halloween is going to be the first movie we've discussed twice. That's right. Uh, However, the difference is is that I've never seen it, so it'll be through my fresh perspective. Right. So I can talk about the things I liked, the things I didn't like, and I can also make fun of Kevin. Speaking of which, that's Kenneth Levitsky. That's me! Who am I? That's, um... Chris Mercy. It's Chris Mercy, yeah, yeah. All right. Why. I was trying to throw something clever out there. We already talked about it. Was it, what, was it uh, Michael Kruger? Michael Kruger. Was no. Freddy Myers? Fre- Freddy, no. It was Jason. Freddy Voorhees. No, because uh, I hmm. guess you could argue Michael Myers in his blue jumper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Jason in his blue mm-hmm. jumper. Mm-hmm. Either one. Yeah. The, the plaid or the denim shirt, the button up shirt. That's, yeah, later that, on. That later he rocks on, in, yeah. what was that, chapter four? I think, it might have been three. Final chapter? I think it was three. Three? Because three, I think, is when they started to actually get an idea of what he should look like. Yeah. Or it might have been the final chapter. Final chapter is my favorite. Final chapter was, was all right. Final chapter's pretty nice. I know a lot of people say it's overrated, but you know what? I, I, I watched them all freshly in the last two years. What I love about final chapter yeah. is they go through this whole thing about how they kill Jason off. Yeah. And then the really cool part is how the kid, the kid that kills him yeah. fucking goes nuts. Yeah. And then he becomes the new Jason. Little Corey Feldman. Yeah. yeah. He becomes the new Jason. Um, But I think between the time he decides to become the new Jason, they've since said that he's like he's in butte with the spirit of Jason or he's yeah. possessed by Jason. So he's really Jason. It's just in a, in a new body. After that, I was like, ah, it would have been kind of cool if the guy that killed him was the guy that was taken off the machete, so to speak. Machete. 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 By the way, they're not making a third machete? Come on now. <laughs> Why not? Right? Like, they talked to Danny Trejo about it, and he's all, like, kind of annoyed about it. Like, I keep talking to Robert, and Robert's just, he's too busy doing all these big Hollywood movies now. And, and I'm just like, he actually said, I've never made a movie, but you know what? I'll go on Kickstarter and I'll direct this thing myself. I would watch it. I would put money towards Dan Trio. Uh, yeah, you know what? Out of all the Kickstarters that I haven't done, like even Super Troopers 2, didn't do any Kickstarter for yeah. that. Well, I mean, that was, yeah. The big movies I have a hard time Kickstarting because they're going to have them regardless. Well, that one, and it was it was met within like a day. Like yeah. Their budget was met like that. Oh, yeah. That. that is one of the quickest. Yeah, it was. It was one of the quickest. But. Machete kills again in space it needs to happen. I don't know. I don't know if it's in space. I don't know if I. That, well, that's the third one. That's the third one. The cre- after credits of the second movie oh, says right. that's right. Machete will return that's and right. Machete kills again in space. Well, then they have to make. It. They gotta make. It. They gotta make it. They've he already could said kill, he's coming. He could kill the Sharknados yeah. in space. Yeah. Like and maybe two. come across Jason in space. <laughs> number two is so over the top, and I love every second of it. See, but it, I mean, like it had to be. No, there's so much the bag. I have so good. I was like, what so the good. fuck is happening? What is happening right now, Geek Pantsers? What's happening right now is we're going through the list. We're going through the list in order of... Uh, release date. Release date. So that means that we're starting off with Seminole Classic. Oh, can I interrupt? Oh, yeah, yes. I want to give a shout-out to my new SoundCloud follower. What? We actually have SoundCloud followers? Yeah. Holy shit. Tape Cult. Tape Cult. I thank know, you I very know, much. I don't know what your sex is, so I'm not going to say thank you, he or she, but thank you, Tape Cult. You have a nasty knack of making things awkward. Like, within I, seconds. You know what? Not gonna guess your gender, so I'm just gonna say thank you, Tape Cult. You hear me it's, say Tape it's Cult? I just said Tape Cult, and tape I, was, cult. I said thank you, Tape Cult. You know cult. what? Say anything else. Uh, I think that's the best way to find out what shirts we should make. Is me just cut loose and be the dog. No, because uh, the shirts we'll make are gonna be gender neutral, so there'll be no male or female. It'll right, because you're gonna say, sizes. I don't know what gender you are. I, that'll be the first shirt that we... Probably get sued over, actually. I think that might be that, that might be. I don't know. We're Canadian. They might let us fly. Oh, they probably didn't mean anything about it. They're friendly. <laughs> They're really nice. They probably didn't know what they were saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, Halloween, 1978. Yeah. John Carpenter's John Carpenter. Halloween. Uh, oh, real quick. Uh, ah. Real quick. Real quick. Mm. Tape called. Thank you for subscribing mm. to SoundCloud. So what do we like? Thank you. Or Seven. Fucking right. So and I don't know two. any of them personally. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. So that's special. That, that, that's that's right. There's nobody's no. Hey, lucky number seven. Tape cult. All right. 
As long as no one Woo! unsubscribes, you All can right. hold that number forever. Um. Yeah. So, third time, Halloween. 1978. <laughs> John Carpenter. I think, John Carpenter. I think we're caught up now. Yeah, okay, we're here. We're here. All right. All right. So, so do you, want, do you start, want me to kick it off? Do you want me to start? Like, what do you, how do you want I don't know. I mean, it's my favorite horror movie of all time. I've discussed that in the past. I can see why. To me, it's a masterpiece. Okay, so. It's it's the setting, it's the atmosphere, it's the music, it's the acting, because at least four, easily the strongest acting that we're going to talk about today. Uh, yeah, I would say easily the strongest acting. Um, I, I, for I, a close I love second, it. though, I'm going to give it to Child's Play. Yeah. Because that kid was unreal. Child's Play, I think, had easily the biggest budget of the four, too. That, that kid was so good. He's a good kid. That I was like, man, I hope he didn't have, like, fucking issues later on. He probably did. Uh, you know? He might not even be alive anymore. You don't know. Um, okay, wrong. so, like I said, I've never watched this before. One thing that I actually got a kick out of, and I just noticed this today, all four of the movies that we watched had an epilogue. Yeah. All four of them. Yeah. Had one quick scene at the beginning that set the table, mm -hmm. and then that was it. And uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. There's another reason why, like, if you watch uh, Halloween and Friday the 13th, like, back-to-back -back, like I did, you're just kind of like, does every movie do this? You see the similarities. Um, Definitely. I mean, they go first person pretty much for what? 80% of Friday the 13th? And yeah. that's the whole opening sequence of Halloween. Which actually... Which is amazing. Because you imagine watching that for the first time in 78, thinking you're watching this killer, and then you find out it's a kid. That should be right the fuck out, actually. Mind blown. I was... Because when uh, you go in, at first I was like, oh, that's a really cool, fluid uh, camera shot. And then immediately pans to the right. I was like... Oh, okay. All right. So this is Michael Myers. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you follow him. And he's like checking out his sister, get felt up by her boyfriend. Whatever. Yeah, right? no big deal. But then, like, when it goes up to the the room where she's naked, mm -hmm. then or topless or whatever, and I was just like, oh god, they're gonna first person him killing her. So we have to essentially watch, like, we got to be the ones to kill her. I was like, oh, I don't like this. This is, like, it was like, oh, that's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. It was horrifying, actually. It was horrifying. So then when he kills her, and they do that wicked shot where he's just leaving the house, and then just as his dad takes the mask off, switches the view, I was yep. like, holy shit, that was crazy. That was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. Um, I hope... But, like, again, you get to Friday the 13th and you're just like, yeah, okay, I get the first person stuff. Mm. But with Friday the 13th, I understood why they did it so much. Because they were trying to do a whodunit thing. Yeah, oh yeah. They were trying to do a whodunit. Yeah, this works. one here, they were like, no, Michael did it. Michael did it. And he's going to do it again. Mm. <laughs> you know? It's um, pure evil. No rhyme, no reason, just evil. Yeah, the, uh, there were some weird parts, though. Like, I remember, like, when... Uh, Lewis is driving back to the psych ward. Okay, with the nurse. With the nurse. Whatever. Yeah. And, uh, like, just out of the blue, they're, they're coming up and people are in the fields. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck yeah. kind of place are you running that they're just like, <laughs> like it's pitch black at night. Yeah. He's Security like, is so lax. Yeah. And they're just like, oh, you're out. And then, of course, like, Michael is the one that gets out. Yeah. But that was crazy. That was nuts. Um, and I was actually like, I was kind of disappointed that you didn't get, really get to see his face ever after you saw him as a kid. Mm -hmm. Just because, like, I don't know, it would have been kind of interesting to see. But then, did they do that with Rob Zombie's version where they showed his face? Yeah. Yeah, but he had long hair, so his hair was always kind of covering him and stuff. And oh. Tyler Mane would have been, right? That's right. Yeah, so, that's right. Um, but they do show his face once at the end here where Lori takes off his mask. Yes, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, for all about that. And the, and the, actually, the guy, um, it's Tony Moran, when she pulls the mask up. He's a different actor from the guy that plays Mike Myers the whole movie. Interesting. Yeah. Why was, would they do that? That was Nick Castle, and they credit him as the shape. Ah. <laughs> yes. So uh, very clever, very clever. Nick Castle is actually the one that came back for last year's Halloween. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you might have told me that, and I probably was just like, "Oh, that's great news." I was thrilled. Yeah. Me, I was excited. Right. 
Here's the funny part, though. I've seen Halloween 2, yeah. 3, sadly, 4, and 5. Never saw the first one. Ever. It's crazy. 4 and 5 are crazy good. I did watch 2 first, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Interesting. First Halloween movie I saw was number 2, and it's when I was off for a week from high school because I came back. Well, and I was watching Sci Fi oh, Channel or something. Oh, no, Annie. And Halloween, Annie. Annie. Halloween 2 was playing. Yeah. I was like, yeah, cool. I'll check it out. I guess I was around 16 or something. But yeah, Halloween 2, I watched that, and I was just like, I gotta watch the first. Like, now. It was really good. And I watched the first, and it's. I actually watched the third one first. Oh, really? Which is total mindfuck. Because you know who Mike Myers is. Yeah. And you think, oh, it's a Halloween movie. Okay. And it's like Curse or Season of the Witch or something. And within like five minutes, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's happening. There's no Michael Myers in this movie. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of confusing. And then when I found out finished the movie, I was like, could I have that two hours back? Because yes. that was horrible. You basically got to watch that movie pretending it's not connected at all. For the well, rest of you find out later, like you know, like I know now. Like he, yeah, he was like John Carpenter was like, I don't want to do this anymore. He wanted it to be like a so let's different do an anthology tale, thing. Everyone. Yeah, you know. But then after the third one. Third one changed. What the fuck's wrong with you? Mike Myers! Yeah. Come on! Mike Myers comes back. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll bring it back and make it supernatural. That's when Carpenter left the series. Well, you can tell. He wrote number two. I don't know, I don't think he wrote number three, but I'm pretty sure he produced it and did the music for it. Okay. And then but he, I mean, then you can tell done. because, like, like, in the first two, there's no, uh, no supernatural stuff. There's no, it's just this is a big dude that is hard to kill. That's it. But he's a human. Um, and then it's in the fourth and the fifth that they start doing the same thing they did with Jason. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Getting into the whole mythology behind it all. What is it? A cult? Yeah. Later on? It's a cult. Because I, I mean, I, I've only seen four and five once. I'm not like I have them, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not a huge on It's them. a cult. That's the one where, like, because they're, they're linked. Mm. They're directly linked. The cult, the cult of Thorn? Yeah. And that's where they start referring to him. Yeah, Michael Myers is like, like a force of nature, like he's pure. Right. Instead of being like a dude yeah. that's just fucked. I mean, it's cool they brought Loomis back for the wrestling, even though he was burnt to a crisp in number two. Yeah. But still. Yeah. I mean, because I do like Donald Pleasant as Loomis in this. Like, I, I actually I, don't I, like Loomis's character in this movie. I, no. No, okay. I actually thought he was stupid in this entire oh, movie. Oh, this is frustratingly he... stupid, actually. Okay, explain. He knows who he is. Yes. Right? So, he does, you know, it feels, I felt to me like he's just kind of dragging his feet on this. He knows who he is. He knows the history. Mm -hmm. Right? So, instead of going to the city, alerting the police, and, oh, I don't know, alerting the Strode family, he does none of these things until three quarters of the movie's done, and then he's kind of like, Oh, yeah, hey, cops. Well, he never knew anything about the Strode family. Why wouldn't he? The whole brother-sister thing was introduced to the sequel. Oh, okay. All right. Um, then that kind of throws me his, for a his explanation to uh, the, the cop in this bracket is that, because Bracket wants to go to the news stations, and he said, well, don't do that. It'll call it mass hysteria. It's Halloween night. People are going to see Michael everywhere. And you'll be going all over the place looking for him. Meanwhile, he's killing people and getting away. I liked him better in the second one, I can tell you that much. Yeah, just I liked him a lot better in the hospital. Yeah, I liked him a lot better in the second one. But man, for some reason I thought I must have just was like because I know that there's they're related and stuff like that, so that's probably why I was like, This is so fucking stupid. How do you not notice? Yeah. You know? Although anyway. Regardless, yeah. that part there regardless. was really okay. the only thing I okay. didn't like about this whole movie. Okay. That was it. I like him as an actor, I really do. I yeah, no, like I thought, like, later on, I see, like, later on in the series, like, for Chris, he becomes, Chris Michael Murray, he gets a little, a little nutty. <clears throat> as you would. As you would, Because, I mean, like, if you got burnt to a crisp. Yeah. After the guy that you thought you killed yeah. was smart enough to swap masks with another dude that also just kind of happened to have the same dimensions as him. Mm -hmm. You came back to life, shrugged off the burnt. You'd go a little nutty, too, man. You'd go a little nutty. You'd go a little crazy. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so that's the only thing I didn't like. Everything else I loved. One of my favorite things about it was how horrifying this movie was shot. 
right? Because the cinematography is nuts. Like I remember when you uh, talked on uh, about Halloween on our second ever camcast, third ever camcast. Don't ever correct me. That's what I did. Don't quietly. ever. It's still a correction. People watching will see the correction, but people listening have no idea. This happened. is for him, by the way. Anyway, so. <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, so on the third one, and you talked about how, like, you know, there's there's scenes where, like, people are just kind of, like, walking, and he just kind of, like, pops his head out type of thing, you know, that kind of stuff. I was like, okay, well, that's actually really interesting. That sounds like one of those where you're just like, that's fucked. But they would do, like, Carpenter would do shots where, like, Lori, in the middle of the day, this is where it got oh, really yeah. horrifying, All in the middle time. of the day, just walking down the street. And he's just there, and you just get an over-the-shoulder shot, and you see part of his, like, side of his head, and he's just staring. And you get that breathing. And, and she has like, no fucking clue. Huh. She has no fucking clue. And I was just like, oh my god, this is this is the part that's horrifying. Like, I wouldn't say that this is a horror flick, but this is definitely one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. Because, like, this is the kind of shit that could happen in real life. Mm-hmm. You could have a nut case, start stalking people mm-hmm. and killing people just for no reason. Yeah. But even just that weird stalking thing he was doing, I was just like, oh, this is rough. You know? And like... Standing in the sheets. On standing the in the sheets or like <coughs> literally locating her yeah. at school. Yeah. Staring at her from across the fucking street just... And then she's looking and then he's just... He doesn't break and then she looks away and then he's gone. I was like, for Christ's sakes, like, mm-hmm. this is horrifying stuff. And even the little boy, it's Tommy. Yeah. He's, like, at the school, just driving and watching him walk. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, like, he's walking along the fence, following him, then he gets in the car and just keeps driving. Keeps pace with him. Yeah. Gets in the car, continues to keep and pace. And the camera is, like, keeping up with all of this movement. And the kid has no, like, I, the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, that's how fucking kids get kidnapped. Yeah. That's how it happens, because they're not watching, and this sick fuck is just in, like he's zoned in. Mm-hmm. It was horrifying. I watched the entire movie and I was like, like, <laughs> I don't watch horror flicks as much as you do. Yeah. Okay? I'm not a horror aficionado, aficionado as you are. I like scary movies. I'm not a big fan of gore though. I'm not a huge gore fan. You know? I, I mean, we're like, uh, with zo- it doesn't bug me with zombies. I'm used to gore and zombie movies. I, it does, it depends on the movie for sure. Yeah. Movie for sure. Can't, I can't watch cannibal movies. I can't. I can't. Cannibalism do that. and and rape. Uh, rape I, is I cannot. One. I cannot stomach those. I things. also don't like those torture porn movies. Yeah. They're not. I don't think they're scary. They're just gross. They're just gross. Like the Human Centipede. Yeah. That's. A, I've never seen any of those movies. I will never watch any of those movies. Yeah. In fact, I will never watch anything from that director. I watched the trilogy. I know. I know. For some reason, I keep kept watching them after the first. Yeah, uh, I don't well, know what to tell you. I don't, I don't know. know what to tell you. I, I am going to be the She's guy that when I die, I'm going to be the guy that's never watched Two Girls, One Cup, and I'm never going to watch the, anything that that director has done. Yeah. Uh, never. He might have actually directed Two Girls, One Cup. Judging from the content, does not surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's fucked. Of course it's, it's fucked. It's, 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 fucked. it's so fucked. It's so fucked. The premise is about a dude... Mm. Who sews asses to feet, mouths to asses. Yeah. And then calls him a human centipede. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and when one of them has to shit, he goes, feed her. Exactly. And then it shows her. Yeah. Eat, like, eat what shit. the fuck, man? Here's me. Here's me. An up and coming actor. I auditioned for this role. Yeah. And already I'm reading the script and I'm going like. Oh. I don't know how about my, this shit. My mouth is on that person's ass. I don't know about this shit. This is. Okay, like an agent seems to think this will be a surefire hit. Then I'll meet the guy. Mm-hmm. There's no way that you meet this director and think, he's actually a really cool dude. I mean, a lot of the biggest stars in Hollywood get their star in horror movies. But here's the thing. None of those stars met this dude and was like, no, he's a real cool guy. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I hung out with him, had a couple beers with him. We talked shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, he mentioned his human centipede movie. It's totally fucked up. Yep. Didn't see that coming. Other than that part, he's a normal dude. No, he's a fucking weirdo. I, I will hang my hat on that. He's a fucking weirdo. Yeah, well, he wrote that. Directed it. Mm-hmm. And then went, we need to make a sequel, and it needs to be bigger. Yes. 
Then we may need to make a third movie, and it needs to be even bigger. Mm. What a bullet in that guy's head. Oh, wait. Boom. Hold on. I don't think so. No. I don't know if he's a horrible person. He's just fucked up. Yeah, I mean, he's got a fucked up imagination, and he decided to share it with the world. Yeah, the worst part is you get the two types of people. There's the people that have seen it like you. Yeah. That are like, honestly, don't even know why I kept watching. I, it, or you yeah. get the other people that are like, oh, you didn't like that movie? <laughs> Couldn't yeah. handle it? Yeah. Couldn't handle Who's it? Who's weirder? Him or the fan base? Fan base is just as... Uh, the, the ones, they're probably weirder. Because they're literally yeah. like nose turners. Like, mm, couldn't yeah. handle it. I've always wanted to sue someone's mouth through an ass. Yeah, it's like, this what is amazing. It's not that I couldn't handle it, it's horrifyingly disgusting. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like there's certain things that your brain should never see. It's like Terrifier. Have you heard Terrifier? Yes, I have. Like the Clown? I have. I have not even seen it though because I was like, I don't think I'm going to want I watched a clip and I was like, no thanks. Fucked up. I was like, no thanks. Fucked up. I know a lot of people love him because he's the new horror icon, and those are kind of rare these days, a new horror icon. True, but... But it goes too far. It goes so into the extreme in the movie that I was actually nauseous. Ooh, yeah, see, I don't like that. That's the yeah. thing I don't like. So anyway, getting back to so, Halloween. Uh, so Halloween doesn't make me nauseous. No, but like for me to be like this the entire tense. time, it's I was like, tense. holy crap, holy crap. And then like, the worst part was, is because like once you get to a certain point, like, once he starts ramping it, now he's killing people, then there's really no release because it's like, he's, we've already established that no matter, like, the, regardless of the fact that the guy's like six fucking seven feet tall yeah. and, like, big, the guy can fucking move, yeah. he can hide, you know, so it's like, where is he? Where is he? That was the worst part of this whole movie, was like, where is he? You know, and then, uh, the part where the kid sees him bringing the body into the house, mm. I was like, holy fuck, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know? Um, and then when we get to the final scene when Rory's just like, she goes over there to figure out, like, she wants to talk to a friend or whatever. It's like, what the fuck's going on type of thing? And then yeah. finds him? Mm-hmm. I was like, Jesus Christ! But then... Yeah, who said, like, Annie's in the bed with the Judith Myers tombstone? Yeah! Yeah. It's like, what the And fuck? that was cool, too. Like, he stalks her for, what, 20 minutes around that house? And then kills her in the car? And he could grab her anywhere. Anywhere. Like, when she was doing her laundry, like... And the whole time I was watching it, I was just like... Like, at first I was like, why the fuck did he toy with him this much? And then I was like, because it's part of what gets him off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's part of him just being like, yeah, like... Right. And she tries the car door and it's locked, and she goes in and gets the keys, comes back, and now it's open. And you're just like, oh... It's, it's all fogged up. Like, I love this movie. I love the way it's shot. I love how the kills are believable without going into like ugh, gruesome. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Like when he kills Bob, it just and then stabs him, oh. and then and then lets go, and just looks at him, and then you get that side shot. Bob just hanging there with a knife in his chest. Oh, like oh yeah. Oh, that was rough. They were actually, like, I, and I gotta say, like, that's probably the thing that, that kills me with these movies is when they go too gore with these kills, right? Yeah. These, like, again, this is why it's so horrifying. Felt real. Mm-hmm. It felt like this is the kind of thing where, like, you could read about this or, well, hear about it mm-hmm. on a podcast, and then you're like, like, he held them and just let them stay on the blade? Like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy, right? Yeah. Um, oh, God. Like, even just talking about it, I still get chills with this, because... It took me, like, I love Halloween. The music! Oh, that John Carpenter score. Good God! That That's his best score. Like, like, oh, Escape from L.A., Big Trouble in China. He's done some great scores, but this is just it's so iconic. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good that, like, like I said, never watched that movie all the way through, but I yeah. hear that music, and I'm just like, oh, this, is, this yeah. is not going to be good. The bits with the breathing parts, like everything where he's just kind of standing and watching, like, or like around a tree and shit, you're just like, this is the creepiest fucking thing ever. Like, it's so, it reminded me when I first watched uh, uh, First Blood, mm-hmm. the Rambo yep, one. Yep, yep. And they do that side scrolling shot of the troopers looking for him. And then, like, you get bits of Rambo just kind of popping up, or, you know, the panning past a tree and there he is and you're just like 
that's really cool to show it from that perspective. Yeah. But in this context, you're like, this is horrifying. This is absolutely horrifying because nobody knows he's around at all. And there he is just standing around basically saying, I could kill you at any time. Mm-hmm. Literally any time. You have no fucking idea. I'm going to toy with you, though, because it gives me an erection. I'm going to fucking kill you. It's just... Uh, it's actually know. kind of disappointing that they... I mean, obviously, you have to go the supernatural route at some point to for this series to continue. Yeah, well... Yeah, obviously, but... And I think that's why I love the first two so much. <laughs> And That's even, what I'm saying. Like, it's disappointing. Even like H2O, I really love it. H2O. I, I, I did though. For, I know. For years, I, I know. For years, I would watch one, two, H2O. I know you really love. Resurrection H2O. was garbage though. I would not watch Resurrection. It killed Lori like right off the bat. Can't believe. Like, H2O is also garbage. Yeah, you know what? You can it, love it. It's got that dimen like do you remember those movies, those dimension movie horror movies from the, that time? Yeah, friend? no, I know. Like I they know. they all kind of felt the same. Yeah, no, I know because like it, they all watch Scream and love yeah. Scream. I can't wait to do fucking Scream. That'd be great. Ooh, we should do that next all week. All four screams. Yeah, because I've never even watched the fourth one. Yeah, let's yeah. do all four screams. Yeah, okay, let's do next that. Next Halloween. Next Halloween. Because I love the first three. I actually loved all of them. Except for the four kids that ever watched them. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure. I love them all. But I think part of it is that Wes Craven is an actual director. Mm-hmm. Like, he knows what he's doing. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of Friday the 13th. I think that he got, did he do anything after that? I don't think he did. No. Nothing is inspired in that movie. Well, he I, directed I, Victor Miller? Yeah, I don't, I, I, don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll get to that. Because we're coming up next, but... Uh, oh, Sean S. Conner. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know if it is. I meant to look into it, but then I was like, I don't care enough to, because yeah. nothing I saw. Like, in this, so in, in uh, Halloween, 1978, John Carpenter, you can see that this guy has a clear eye of how he wants to present these, this movie, okay? Oh, God, yeah. You can see Wes Craven in A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. You can see it in... Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Hmm, time machine. In Child's Play, you can see that these guys are directors who have a clear vision. They know what they want to get out of the story. They, yep. they know how they want to present it. That guy, I feel like he was just like, what is everyone else doing? I do think Friday had the lowest budget, though. I know, I think Halloween had the lowest budget. Halloween definitely had the lowest budget. Actually, you know what? Halloween definitely had the lowest budget. There's no way it didn't. Without that... Uh, I mean, not that I'm saying, like, Friday 13th had a clearly huge budget in comparison. No, but Paramount released it. So I'm sure Paramount was throwing some at it. But like each of these three have a big distributor behind them. Whereas Halloween was indie from the start. And then Universal picked it up for number two. Long. That's probably why it... Oh, man. The, the funny... Yeah, because Michelle doesn't watch horror movies, right? Mm-hmm. So she, uh, she actually watched the first two minutes of Halloween. And she literally, like, they went to the house and she went, that's fucking creepy. And I was like, yeah, that is pretty creepy. And then as soon as it started to move, and she's just like, yeah, I know. We're talking about yeah, it today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're talking about it today. And I, I, I was like, because uh, I actually jammed the last two movies in today. I put uh, Friday the 13th in today, and I put in uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street just before I came over. Oh, okay. Just before cool. supper, right? Um <clears throat> And I was like thinking about it. I'm like, of the four of these movies, Halloween is the closest one that I can say that you could probably sit through. Because while it's not like your standard horror flick, it's just it's a horrifyingly realistic stalker movie. And she's like, no, no, mm. which I get because my wife's the first person that ever said it like this. She's like, I just don't understand people that like horror. And I was like, oh, okay, like what do you mean? She's like, well, I just don't get why anybody would put themselves in that horrifyingly scared state of mind. I mean, that's a fight or flight response, and you're basically telling your body, we're gonna, we're gonna fucking scare the shit of her. She didn't say that part, but that's essentially what she's saying. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's actually right. It is weird that we're like, no, 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 I want to take two hours of my day and just fuck my nerves up. <laughs> yeah. Just totally fuck my nerves up for two hours, maybe four, depending on how bad this movie messes me up. Like, House of a Thousand Corpses, that fucked me right up. I've never watched it all the way through. That was a fucked up movie. And I never will watch it all the way through. But the sequel's a masterpiece. Oh, it's fucking amazing. Devil's Rejects. It's so, so good. In I, fact, it's probably the only Rob Zombie movie I can say I enjoy. I agree. 
I agree. I yeah. absolutely love Devil's Rejects so much that I tried to watch House of a Thousand Corpses again, and I was like, nope, can't no. do it. No. Nope. It's amazing the two are connected, because they're two totally different movies. But again, I think we, uh, we talked about this on the pod- our previous camcast, where it was just like, the first one, nobody, it was just, here's money, you're Rob Zombie, make a movie, and then yeah. uh, when they made the movie, then the studios were like, yeah, you can make a sequel, but it can't be like that. We'll give you a lot more money. You'll get a way higher budget. Mm-hmm. But if it looks anything like this fucking horrifying piece of shit, you can't make a movie. <laughs> you can use the same characters. That's fine. You can use the same characters. They can even be a little gory. A little gory. But nothing like this. It's a little gory. That's it, what I mean. It's still creepy at times. It's super creepy. But That's where I think it wins. House, house was disturbing. Mm-hmm. Like it goes on a different level. And that's the probably the reason why even though he's on my shirt, I've never been a Texas Chainsaw fan because I don't find the movies scary. I find them disturbing. Yeah, that's right. I have actually, so, I have tried to watch, I've tried to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but like the original one from the 70s. Yeah, I tried yeah. to watch that one. I couldn't do it. Because, hmm. you know. Plus, I have a hard time with uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre because uh, elements are based on true True events. Yeah. That Ed scheme. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it's, like, that shit is kind of fucked up. Like, the whole, like, uh, uh, the tables. The the tables and, like, lampshades made out of, like, human skin and stuff like that. That's like, that's that's gross. That's gross. But it's also gross that having a real life, you know, Mm -hmm. that they're a house of cannibals and stuff like that. Like, I was just like, fuck, this is gross. I never bothered with House of uh, uh, the Hills Have Eyes. Yeah. Because when I watched uh, a chunk of that remake, I missed the first horrifyingly like, graphic like rape scene, so I missed that part. I, I just saw the brutal kills later. <coughs> I was like, "This is fucking gross." I love the end of that movie. When he psychs up, but I can't do. He goes scene. Super Saiyan. Yeah. I was like, "Holy shit!" That was awesome, but the rape part. Don't like rape in movies. I don't. I hate. I, I don't. I, I don't like. So like it's so such much. a disgusting act. Like and even just like violence towards little kids. I don't like seeing that in movies. I don't no, like seeing violence either. towards animals in movies. No, me neither. Usually, like when I, that's why I hate when I see an animal in a horror movie because I was like, yeah, well, dog or cat's there to die. That's right. Fantastic. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully they don't show it. Yeah. But they usually do. They usually do. In, in fact, the dog death in this movie. Was the trainer wearing Michael's thing and just holding the dog and just letting the dog like fall, drop his legs? He was just hugging him and he just dropped his legs and then John Carpenter shot in slow mo to make it look like the dog was dying. Oh, wow. Is yeah. that fucking freaky? It's not like Friday the 13th where they actually cut off a snake with a. Uh, yeah, I know. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, they actually killed the snake. Uh, so, uh, so, yes, now I have one, a new favorites to my horror list. It is Halloween. Is like I, I I was halfway through that movie, and I or actually no, it was right at the end where I went. That's a master class. Yeah. That's a master class of shooting. That's a master class of uh like music. A oh, mute man. That's atmosphere. Uh, even acting. Mm-hmm. Okay, like horror movies aren't known for great acting. No. Yeah. Okay. We got Jamie Lee Curtis, and yes, she's one of the best actresses. She's a fantastic actress, but. Everyone was good in this movie. Yeah. Even, like, Loomis, even though I didn't like his character, he was still really good in it. Yeah. You know, it was just one of those where I was like, this seems kind of dumb. Although, in retrospect, I guess I should have... I should have realized that they had to <laughs> reference the fa- familiar connection. Because like that. that's another thing, too, because like I said, I watched the second one, and they talked about it, and I was like, oh, okay, all right. But yeah. I already knew it because of Wikipedia and all that yeah. other shit. Yeah, So, but anyway. But, um... Yeah, I don't know, like, you watch all the other three, and they're, yeah, all three of these have actors in it where I'm just like, Ooh. So it's amazing that I can watch Halloween all the way through, because I saved this for last, because it's my favorite. I've watched it enough where I was like, if I can't fit it in, then I have it memorized. Yeah, exactly. About no, it. which I understand. <clears throat> but I did. I got to watch it last night, and I was just like, it's amazing that Carpenter made this movie with, like, not a lot of money, and he actually got actors that were believable enough. Like I, I've shot a movie, and I, you know, I can say that 
it's hard to find decent actors. Yeah, who are willing to do it. Or, no yeah, way. especially yeah. when they don't have experience, like to pull up a performance when you also have yeah, no experience. Yeah, exactly. The only thing that I thought was kind of funny was uh, Jimmy Lee Curtis looked older than everyone else in high school. Mm-hmm. That was the only part. I kind of chuckled yeah. to myself. I was like, okay, all right. But I really, I wonder if she actually was. I don't think, I think she was the same age. I think she was. I think she, I think she was like 19 mature, when she did the movie. She yeah. just always had that look. Yeah. Like she always looked like she was in her like smoking hot mid 30s. Mm-hmm. Jeez. She still looks incredible. Oh, God, yeah. It's ridiculous. She got such good shape for that Halloween movie last year. And now they're doing two more back to back. I think I'm gonna skip the rest of the Halloweens and just watch the last one that came out. The last one ignores number two though. Oh. So interesting. This one, her bumping into Michael, it's the first time she's seen him since the end of the very first movie. Oh. Yeah. Well, I guess it kind of works because I mean Halloween two is the next day, so technically November first. Right. Not technically, I mean it is November first. Yeah. What? We'll ignore that. Whatever. I'm going to call it November 1st. Yeah, I know. Halloween 2, November 1st. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, so you could have called it Night After Halloween. You could have. Yeah. That's still stupid. Still stupid. I mean, I understand why. I mean, I know why play, they don't reference it. Right yeah, now, whatever. So. Halloween 2. Well, it's just interesting that they easier. cut out the second one completely. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, I'm all for, like, even fourth and fifth, I thought were really good. In comparison to what follows after that, yeah, uh, like H two O for instance, which is garbage. I know you love it, and that's okay. H two O is a lot better than the three that came before it. I think, in my opinion. What are the three that came before it? Four, five, and Curse of Michael Myers. Not even Paul no. Rudd being in Curse of Michael Myers can save it. <laughs> it yeah, so I never bad. even watched Curse of Michael Myers. It's so I bad. never watched Curse of Michael Myers. Mm. Um, I don't think H two O is better than four and five though. Mm. Isn't H2O the one with Buster Rhymes? No, that's with Resurrection. Oh, oh. Where they're doing the reality show in his house. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. the pile of garbage I'm talking about. Okay, that's. H2O was Jamie Lee Curtis returning for the first time, Josh Hartnett, Ella Cool J. Yeah, okay, alright. No, no, no. I, yeah. I keep, I, whenever I'm referencing a shitty or, uh, Halloween, it's the one with Buster Rhymes. Resurrection. That's the worst of the worst right there. That one was so fucking bad. That killed the franchise until Rob Zombie decided to kill the franchise again. Yeah, hey guys, I'm bringing the franchise back. Just kidding! Yeah. You know, that was my problem with the remake. I watched the remake in the theater because I was excited Halloween was coming back. And I was like, Rob Zombie, yeah. It was disturbing. Of course it was. Yeah. Of course it was. Yeah. It was a problem. The problem with it is it, they spent like a good hour of just young Michael Myers. Like a whole setup. <laughs> And he's like living in this trailer park life with all these like lower class. But drums. wait, hold on. That doesn't make any sense though. Like it, oh, because it's a remake. That's right. It's, it's a remake. Because I mean, if they were going to just rip based off the first movie, yeah. he lived in a fucking nice house. Yeah. He had a nice upbringing from the, he was just fucking crazy. That's all. And that was, that's the perfect thing about the original is that he was just this normal kid in this nice upbringing. Then, Not that he was normal, he was yeah. just fucking crazy. He, evil. he just was fucking crazy. Yeah. And I, that's what I mean, like, that's what makes it so horrifying. Because the rest of these movies, I don't know, probably, probably the 13th has got the level of realism in that sense, but especially the last two, where you're like, this can't happen in real life. Oh, the last two are just, like, complete fantasy. I actually haven't watched Shell's Play in a long time, so when I watched it, I was like, I forgot about all this weird voodoo shit. <laughs> that's one of the things I, I actually, I really, I really like this movie, yeah. that Shell's Play, I really like it's really good. There's only one particular scene in the whole movie where I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot all about that. I don't like that. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Everything else, I'm like, this is great. But, uh, okay, so I'm done with Halloween. Halloween. I just gotta say one more thing. Yes. You know how we talk about the style of Halloween? Yes. What I love in the movie is that you only hear the breathing when Michael's around. Yes. But the end, the very end, where Loomis looks over and Michael's gone, and then he starts showing like shots of the street. Shots of the room. Yes. His breathing is throughout all of it because he could be anywhere. That fucking that ending was terrible in that sense. I didn't want to reference he that. He could be anywhere. I like, oh god, I hate this ending yeah. so much. And that's like I got goosebumps just thinking about it. Look at that goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, fuck, I get a chill. Like, I know. I actually, I get a chill. Like, I was watching him last night, and I was just like, oh, God, what a, what a nice touch by having the breathing over. I will actually say it's a horrifyingly nice touch. It's a horrifying touch. It's one of those, like. It's like he's gone, and now we have no idea where he is. Mm-hmm. He could be in your closet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could be walking down the street, and then all of a sudden you'd just be like. Mm, around the shrub. Oh, hey, Lori. Yeah, hey, I'm still around. See you tonight. And then you'll like run around to the shrub and yeah. it's like, not there anymore. Not there. Where am I? Yeah. Got brand new Kirk mask. <laughs> it's the other one you ripped off my face. Mm. All right. Okay, so that's Halloween, my favorite horror movie of all time. Okay. Now, one of my favorite movies of all time. Friday 13. Not one of my favorite movies. Are we tired Friday? We're going to order a date. Are we tired Friday night? That's the rules. I thought you said your favorite movie of all time. No, 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 no. I said now this is yeah. one of my favorite movies, and yeah. then you said Friday the Thirteenth, and I said not. I thought you one. meant. I thought you meant like now. Nope. We're talking about one of my favorite movies. Nope. Not. Okay. So Halloween is now one of your favorite movies. One of my favorite horror. I'm movies. glad you finally got to watch it all the way through. So am I actually. It was one of those where like, and you get to a certain point, especially because I watch a shit ton of movies. Like we watch movies. We watch movies. I watch too movies. many. I rewatch movies like crazy. Yeah. I had a conversation with a girl from work, uh, Kayla Walsh, and she's like, I rewatch movies all the time. Yeah. And uh, my girlfriend hates it. Because she's like, you just watch this. And I'm like, I'm the same way. Yeah. And every once in a while, Michelle's like, I don't know how you can do this. Yeah. I, I don't wanna I don't wanna watch Batman movies. Adrian would be like, didn't we just watch this two years ago? Like, that's the point. Uh yeah. Two years yeah. ago. That's a long fucking time. It could even be three weeks for me. Yeah. I'll be like, you know what? Yeah, I'll watch the four. I don't know how long I'm going to live. I want to watch this movie more often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to die knowing that I didn't get to watch the Born Identity again. <laughs> for Christ's sakes. Mm. Anyway. Okay, so now we're going to not talk about one of your favorite movies. No, no, no. We're going to talk about a movie that is not one of my favorite movies. Quit intentionally butchering that phrasing. <laughs> I don't like that. Friday the 13th. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that part is iconic. Like, that's so cool. Oh, the music's good. Like, they got the music. Now that's the theme for the rest of the series. That's Even exactly with Jason it. around, you still got that theme. Yeah, that's exactly it. But, uh, um, but yeah, it's unfortunate, like, we're talking the first of every franchise. It's kind of crappy. You can't talk about a movie with Jason. It is, and that's but... the weirdest part, because, like I've said before, like, you know, like, I, I was born in the 80s, like, we were born in the 80s, so when I was about the age to watch movies, I had already knew who Freddy was, obviously, because I had, was haunted by him for, yeah. for yeah. years before I oh, could that be guy. like, yeah, maybe I'll watch the movie again. Yeah. You know what the next movie I watched? Literally the next one? Freddy's Dead. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you died, motherfucker. You gave me nightmares for years. And then right after that, I watched New Nightmare, and I was just like, okay, let's watch the other movies now. Let's go back and watch them. Yeah, that's all. Uh, to do a, uh, oh, to do a horror franchise, Cam Casper, we might have to do one of these times too. Uh, yeah. The only drawback though is you gotta like wade through a lot of shit with some of these movies. Ooh. It'd be hard. It'd be hard. Actually, it's hard with a horror franchise. It is really hard with a horror. Like franchise. I watched in the last two years because I do my uh, thirty-one days of Halloween every year. Yeah. The last two years, I watched these all the way through. Now, Friday the 13th, I'm not crazy familiar with. Like, before I watched them all the way through, I had seen Part 3. Which is uh, garbage. I've seen Jason Takes Manhattan. Also garbage. Jason Goes to Hell. I haven't seen Jason Goes to Hell. Jason X. Who? Garbage. Garbage. And Freddy vs. Jason. I only watched that for that fucking scene in Crystal Lake. Yeah. With the, uh, with the simulator. Yeah. That's the only reason why I watched that movie, and this was before YouTube, so I couldn't just dial up that scene. I had to sit through the whole fucking shitty movie just to get to the scene where he's... They're like, that's oh, Crystal Lake! Let's see what happens! And it's like the two chicks naked. Or yeah. no, they're in bikinis or whatever. They're just like, oh, you're a big boy. I can't wait to have unprotected premarital sex with you. Like in their sleeping bags, and then he grabs the one chick in a sleeping bag and uses her to pummel the other yeah. one in the sleeping bag. And I was like, that's the so funniest I will say that that is probably one of the best deaths in the whole series. And then the end where he just smashes the other one on the fucking tree. I was like, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I sat through an hour of this bullshit movie to get to this. Worth it. Never worth, again, though. Worth Never it. again. Worth Never it. again. That one's a tough one because that series is almost like 
they sprinkled the good movies in around a bunch of shit ones. I know, like, A New Beginning has a big fan base. I did not like A New Beginning. Number five? I didn't even finish it, actually. I just didn't want to. Because like, number five, like, final chapter, Jason dies. <laughs> yeah. Number five is a copycat. Yes. And then number six, Jason comes back to life after his freaking burial ground is struck by lightning, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. But number six was actually really fun. I enjoyed number six. Well, Here, what it is that is... right there is my, one of my favorite ones. Never Hike Alone. This was a. That, that sounds horrifying. That was a. That's a fan film of Friday the Thirteenth that came out two years ago. Wow! Amazing. Okay. Amazing. It's an hour long and it's so good. Okay. All right. What did you say? So I'll have to check it out. Anyways. Yeah. Friday the Thirteenth is Pamela, Jason's mom. No Jason. She's great. She's yeah. great. That casting is perfect. She was really good. Super creepy. And I think, like, her being in there, I get major psycho vibes from the first Friday movie. Oh, yeah. Between, sure. between the music and and not seeing the killer, and then the whole mother aspect, I guess. The, uh, the parts that I didn't like, because this is intentional, I know that they did this on purpose, is when they're showing uh, Pamela killing people, they're actually using a man's body to do this. Yeah. So you see man hands, okay? And it's not a Jerry Seinfeld episode, so yeah. I know it's not a And woman. the killer looks tall. Yeah. Right. Um, and also, uh, like, really, really strong. Like, for a woman to be that strong, mm. like, you'd think that she'd be jacked, right? Uh, so that was immediately, like, right away, because I was like, because I knew who the killer was, right? Yeah. So I'm watching it, and I'm like, oh. Oh, that's just not even cool. Like, so it's like I know why they did it. They did it so that way when they do the reveal, everyone's like, "Holy shit, it's the mom!" Mm -hmm. Right? Because up until that point, you think it might be the crazy old dude who's like, <laughs> "This is first line." You're going to the lake. You're not gonna live. <laughs> like, that's that's awesome. I, what was it like? Fifteen years or something? Yeah. In between. <clears throat> yeah. 50, I think so. 58 and 80 years. Well, no, they, like they go, it's... 22 uh, years. But the first... It was, was 1963. When it opens? At the beginning. And then they go, uh, now. They don't they don't give you a date. So, but they, I think they reference it's been 15 years. Yeah. Or something. Someone says it. But I just... I cracked up hard when he's like, You're going to the camp? <laughs> Not gonna live. <laughs> it's a death curse! <laughs> They're all just kind of like, oh, Roger, he gets weird when he's drunk. I did like that. How that, that girl he was talking to, um, Annie, how they set Annie up to make it look like she's the main character of the movie, and then they that, kill her. I was surprised by too. They kill her, and you're like, whoa. Except, again, for me, because I'd watched the movie, I knew she wasn't the final girl. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. But I was still just like, if I'd watched it the first time around, I'd be like really surprised by that. Yeah. Because they do, they make it, and she seems like a, a great person. Town. Oh, puppy, hey, yeah. all right. Do you know how I can get to Crystal Lake? And then she gets into the one trucker. Yeah. Although that YouTube link you uh, you sent me was uh, chopped weird. Oh, really? So one cut, like one scene, it's uh, she's in the truck with the dude. Yeah. And then it immediately scene cuts to when. Uh, she's in the vehicle with Pamela, oh. but you don't see her. You just see Pamela's, and she's like, "Hey, you just passed the lake." Oh, weird. Yeah, so they, I was like, "They chopped out her getting out of the truck and into the jeep." Yeah, I mean, I could put it together because I'm not stupid. <laughs> yeah, you know what kind of happened. Like, I know when it was going down, but I was just yeah. like, "Oh, that's a little jarring." And then they, you know, they go to that death scene, and I was like, "Oh shit, didn't see that coming." Yeah. Right. <coughs> um, I found like it was. Uh, I forgot that Kevin Bacon was in this movie. Yeah, young Kevin Bacon. <laughs> but he, the director gave him weird things to do. Like, I almost think that the director was just kind of like, uh, just do what you think a kid would do. Yeah. Because, like, when the cop shows up, he's, like, immediately fiddling with the cop's uh, motorcycle and stuff like that. And I'm like, how many kids would fucking do that in a movie? Yeah. Yeah, just start to, oh, the radio, you know, and stuff like that. Like, dead body in the woods. But no, no, don't play around with that. I, like, I, I actually looked at Kevin Bacon's IMDb, like, after I watched this to see what he had done beforehand. 
Because I know, like, with Nightmare, it says introducing Johnny Depp. Yeah, Like, that's exactly. Johnny's first movie. Yeah. Kevin only did, like, three movies before this, and they were, like, fucking, who knows what they are. You've never heard of them in your life. Right. So it's kind of an introducing for him, too. I'd say so. It was just a weird, like, <laughs> role for him. I like, just weird. remember being, like, and they gave him, like, weird lines and stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, whatever. Actually, it's crazy to think that four years after this, he's doing Footloose. That is crazy. To go from that to Footloose? That's like, absolutely after, good, good for him. Good, good for him. him good. That, that must have been a, fuck. He must have really worked hard those four years. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. But good for Bacon. You get to stink off this movie? Mm. Fuck. This would have been the movie that showed the Bacon. I'm glad it didn't, though. You know, no, we got to see wild things when it was matured. That's right. Yeah, that matured. Bacon. That's right. That's right. When it's just kind of there. <laughs> just whoa. Yeah, exactly. Too like. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Where were you in the marketing? <laughs> I was watching this for lesbians. Because I knew that, and I got Kevin Bacon's penis. I knew that Nev Campbell was getting. Oh, she didn't get topless actually. No, she didn't. Denise Richards does. Of course. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> yeah. I don't actually remember being disappointed that Nev Campbell didn't go topless. Because obviously, pre-pre-depressing Chris was like, I want to see them titties! <laughs> now I'm like, I'm glad she did. That's actually really cool. Good and she's for her. Like, no, I'm yeah. not doing that. I yeah. don't need to do that. I'll make out with her, but I ain't showing my goodies. Yeah, meanwhile, Denise is already like naked. Like, wait, yeah. is that the scene? Oh, it's not the scene. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. If we had in the contract, we would have two nudity scenes. And Kevin's just like, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the, the other one. I'll just stroll out with my dick out. Check it out. It's my dick. Mmm. Mm. But anyway. Mm. Um, dick moves. I literally watched this movie this morning. Uh, and I gotta tell you. After Halloween. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I mean, to be fair. To be fair. I don't. I, I don't think, like, if I would have started with Halloween. Yeah. And then saved this movie. Last, I don't think I would have been like, it's a great movie. There's so many great things about mm-hmm. it. It's well written, well directed, well shot. See all the things that I'm listing off here? Um, it is well shot, though. I mean, the, there the, are parts that are nice. The first person shot. stuff's oh. pretty good. First the, person the stuff scenery is good. shots are nicely done with the lake and everything. The scenery shots are nice. But it's got a big cast, and because it has a big cast, it's got a lot of awful acting. It's entirely almost wall to wall. Oh, I forgot I did a kill count. Oh, you did? Michael's kill count in number one in Halloween was seven. I was going to say, it's not going to be much. And seven includes two dogs, so really it's five humans. Okay. Yeah. Alright. You can always tell who's a dog lover. Eh? It's, like, it's like seven kills. Technically five, because two of them are dogs, but yes. let's face it. Yes. Let's face it. Pamela killed nine people. Friday the 13th actually leads the pack. Kills over the film. Well, I'm just trying to think. Okay, because that's right. Because Pamela kills the first group of uh, campers. Mm-hmm. That was actually surprising. Like, because when they did the opening montage, I was just like, I actually thought that it was the kid, <clears throat> right? I yeah. forgot. I forgot that the kid uh, Jason drowned. Yeah. Because they were too busy <clears throat> fornicating and drinking. Instead of watching the baby, yep. right? So I forgot that part. So I thought, like, oh man, they really ripped off the child there. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, so having uh, having her being the killer, it's uh, still a really good twist. It is a good twist. It's one. Of, it's like because we're talking about Sleepaway Camp. It's right there with Sleepaway Camp. If it wasn't for that twist, yeah. there'd be nothing remarkable about yeah. this. Yes, this is like two years after Halloween, and. Uh, three years after Black Christmas, which is technically the first slasher movie, I guess. That's the one that's the first slasher. I mean, I think slasher. Psycho is kind of the first. If you I would about. say that Psycho is the first, or maybe it's like the proto-slasher movie. Yeah, film, but they, they, I think they consider it. Black Christmas. But Black Christmas is considered the first slasher Which is movie. Canadian. Yep. Yep. That's right. Um, but Black Christmas is creepy. That's a creepy fucking movie. That is creepy. Yeah. I've only been able to watch it once, and while I acknowledge it's a, a really good movie, mm-hmm. it's just, it's unsettling for me that I'm like... He's up in the attic. It's unsettling enough that I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. go through that again. Yeah. Like, I guess in that regard, I understand what Michelle's like, I don't understand why anybody would do that to themselves. Make them scared for two hours. You know, I'm like, I don't need to fuck with my nerves like that. <laughs> I'm okay. <clears throat> so... Um, um, so let's say I've listed a handful of things that I didn't like. 
So we got writer Victor Miller. As far as I know, he hasn't really done anything else. I, the score is probably one of my favorite things in the whole movie. Score is absolutely it's Harry Manfred. It's really good. That did the score? Actually, I like the score. The scores are solid of all four. Yes, movies. actually, there is not. You want to know how to write? And I'll even give the Texas Chainsaw like that movie had a good score too. Like they, all of these horror icons, they have their music, their iconic yeah. theme music, where you hear it and you go, "Oh, yeah, that's Michael Myers." Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's Jason. Um, I like that. I agree. The score is one of the best things. The uh, oh, what the hell is her name? The main actress. Oh, uh, Adrian King is Alice. Alice, yeah. So Alice is really good, and Pamela is really good. Yeah, personally, I hate Alice. I find her to be the most annoying final girl ever. So she doesn't run around and shriek. Really. Drives me nuts. I thought that was kind of realistic. Yeah, she, I, I think she is so annoying. It's... Like, I watched all three of these, or all these Friday the 13th. Part three has the best final girl ever. I forget her name right now, but part three... Best Friday the 13th final girl. Um, oh, the, I will say, though, the fight scene between them was horrible. Mm. It was absolutely atrocious. Yeah. Um, like, I, okay, like, I'll give him credit, like, when she smokes Pamela with the pan, yeah. and Pamela goes down like a sack of shit, I, like she's out cold, I, was I, like, I would go down. All right, that's... At that's least a that's cast iron pan. pan. I'm going down. Yeah, like, that's <laughs> believable, Yeah. you know? Um, the fucking head chop scene was crazy, though. Yeah. I was just like, oh, shit! I forgot they did that. Yeah. You know? And she's just running at her, too. Like, what? It looked like a good 20 feet away. Just like, ah! And Pamela's just like, ah! I, I better I could stay. jump in the lake. I could run my in the direction. But uh, my favorite part, here. which I never saw coming, was when Pamela was like, help me, Mommy. Help me, Mommy. Oh, yeah. Kill them. Oh, I will, Jason. Like, in the same shot. And I was like, oh. That's nice. That's awesome. That's really nice. Like, I'd almost be like, if she continued into the second movie, came, like, a lived for whatever reason. Well, she does. You can hear her voice. No. Because you kept her head. No, but I mean, like, actually, if she continued being Jason, oh, just okay. having that duality. Yeah. Because I almost think, like, like, now, if they do a reboot, do the first movie the same, and the second movie, you know, the hockey mask and everything, and everyone's like, oh, it's Jason, but it's actually her, mm -hmm. but she's speaking more as Jason. That, I think, would be really cool. Or even if it's vice versa, and her voice coming out of Jason. Yeah, or either like, way. Imagine taking his mask off, and then a woman's voice starts coming out of his mouth. Yeah, it's, that the yeah. head? Kill I'd be like, Ugh. Kill them all, yeah. Like, yeah. that actually would be really, that'd, that'd be, be creepy. That'd be creepy. That'd be just different enough for you to be like, yeah, it could stand on its own feet. Yeah. And if everyone hates it, then fuck them. Okay, so we're writing up Friday 13. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> or a movie that might actually be a lot like it with strategic differences. Mm. No goalie mask. No. Nope. No. What a baseball catcher's mask. Yeah. One day I'll I'll get to do my slasher movie. Frostbite. <laughs> what? Frostbiters. No. Yeah. I'll tell you about when we're not on camera. I don't want you stealing my ideas. Yeah, copyright sons of bitches. Mm. Don't steal um, my name either. So any, yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah. Um, there we go. That's a good name for a movie. So overall, um, it is the weakest of the four for me. It's not for me. No, I know, because you're a douchebag. I'm a douchebag. I actually, I, I like Friday. No, I, 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 I like the first movie. Yeah. And then, yeah. like I said, it's the psycho vibes that I dig. Because even the music, like when it's not doing, it's got the, the yeah. It's got the same psycho music to it. The psycho vibes are really cool, and I and I love that uh, I was able to watch it and be like, oh, I like that. I love that she's like speaking to Jason, yeah, and as Jason. I was like, that is great. Um, but I also really like the the fucking the fake out at the end where the kid Jason pulls her under. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then she's like, he's still out there. I was like, that's awesome, right? Um, because then it, she never comes back. Like, I oh, don't, she does. Does she? Literally, first she's killed the first like. Oh right, she's in the second, in movie. The second movie. movie. That's right. Like she's I in totally the forgot. same asylum. So, is it the same actor? Same actress, and uh, I think he's he puts an ice pick through her head. Mm. Oh yes, you're right. Just like yeah. <clears throat> 
Okay, so yeah, so she got out right away. Mm -hmm. Iced. Iced, if you will. She was iced. Yes, that's right. (laughs) Um, So yeah, that is ten kills. Still a burlap sack, though. (laughs) They had no idea what to do with them at first, eh? Of course not. Burlap sack, and then coveralls. Wasn't he wearing like denim coveralls? Uh, I want to say it was like Like a plaid shirt. Yeah, overalls, blue yeah. overalls type of thing. Might have been a flat shirt. I can't quite remember. I just remember, uh, I remember at one point watching somebody like pull on an axe to his head, like his neck, and he's just yeah. like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, what? <laughs> what? How does that happen? I mean, okay, I Come guess on. this kid that died like 20 years ago came back is a zombie now, so he's got different powers, but wouldn't he still be a zombie kid? Mm. Instead of growing up to be a full grown man? Yeah. But anyway, wow. that part fucked me up, but I, all, but I really liked the part where they actually they fought, killed Jason by wearing her sweater. Yeah. You know, and then... I like that too. And then there, he's just like, he sees her, and it's just like, Jason, don't do this, or whatever, mm-hmm. and then that's how they kill him. I was like, fuck it, that's awesome. And, uh... That was actually so cool. Like later on, I found out that there was a Friday Thirteenth video game. Yeah, that's one of the power ups that you get is his mom's sweater, so that he can't he doesn't kill you <laughs> because like it's one of those where anytime he shows up, you gotta get the fuck out or you're dead. Yeah, and if you have the sweater, he just leaves. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's really cool. That's cool. That's really cool. So that's Friday Thirteenth. Yep. 1980. Now we're going into 1984 when we were both alive. That's right. For a nightmare. Getting into one of my favorites. Street. This is one of my favorites. So your favorite icons have always been Freddy and Chucky, right? Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Whereas mine have been Michael and Jason. Yeah. So this is this is a cool episode. It is kind of cool. Uh, what I like about uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street as a franchise, there's more hits than misses. You know what I mean? I'm gonna have to take your word for it because I haven't seen a lot of movies. Uh, well, basically, I, I was never huge on Freddy. Yeah, I, the whole in your dream thing—that was a little too much. Like, okay, I want to sleep tonight. I got you. you know, I close yeah, my yeah. eyes and think about Jason and Michael still so fall asleep. I close my eyes and both Freddy. It's, weird. And it's like, weird. It's weird that you're like I can fall asleep thinking about uh, Michael just hanging up in my house. Yeah, I don't know where he is, but yeah. yeah well, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. Yeah, stab me all you want when I'm sleeping. I don't. I'm care. under the covers, bitch. Yeah. Me sleeping is my safe zone. You don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Wes Craven. Um, I honestly have not watched a lot of Wes Craven movies. Like when I look at his list, I watch all the screams. I love the screams. I've only touched the first nightmare. I haven't seen New Nightmare yet. Wait, hold on. You haven't seen New Nightmare? I've never seen New Nightmare. Yeah, and I know I have to because you brought that up last time we talked. It was horror movie. Yeah, like, yeah. but I got that seven pack now. Okay, All thirty dollars right. with a ticket for it too. In Good the deal. original run, I heard it's one and then three, right? Because what's her name? Nancy comes back in the third. Like if you skip number two, well, I, number I, I two. I don't think I have I don't okay, have to number two is. I don't think Wes Craven did number two. I don't think he did any besides this and New Nightmare. Okay. Yeah. That because that might be why because I don't think he wanted to do he didn't want to do the second yeah, one. Yeah, he was like, I'm done. I, I told and my the tale. second one. There's two trains of thought where they feel like the second is part of canon, and there are others that say it's not part of canon. Right. Um, the second one is actually kind of interesting because of the uh, homosexual overtones. Oh. Because instead of a final girl, it's a final guy. And it kind of deals with Jason taking over this dude. Or not Jason. Right. Uh, Freddy taking yeah. over this dude. But there's like an interesting kind of subplot where like you can actually kind of look at it like this is a kid wrestling with his homosexuality and hiding it type of thing. Um, it's not a good follow-up. It's not bad by any means. But like, so, because I, I watched them all. Mm-hmm. So even watching the third one, Dream Warriors, is really good. So it's like, part of me says, like, you can take out the second one, or you can kind of leave it in, like, it's up to you. 
But I feel like if you've never watched them all, then watch them all. Okay? And then you make your own decision, right? My first introduction to Freddy was Freddy vs. Cool. Ooh. Oh, I love Freddy vs. Cool. But I love Jason, so that's why I was like... Because James and I went to watch them in the theater. Yeah. I mean, like, before there was an MCU, like, that was an Avengers. Like, to see those two guys on the screen It was together, crazy. Like, I was like... That was an event. See, but the thing... That was an event. That's one of those ones, though, you gotta be careful because... One or the one group is gonna be mad. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and I think they played it pretty safe. They the way played they it pretty safe because they basically, like, it was a, a draw at the end. Yeah. Freddy got the cat Dave Blaze alive. Yeah. Because he went against him. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, because, uh, yeah, that's right. But, like, they, and they both had their time to shine. Like, at one point, like, Freddy's in the dream and he's kicking the fuck out of Jason. Then yeah. he's in real life and he's getting the shit kicked out of him. Yeah. So it was pretty even handed, but it's one of those where it's like, someone's not going to be happy. Like, the movie wasn't bad by any means. Um, I went oof, because if that's your introduction to Freddy, that's not good. Yeah. Because that's when he's like... It's in more his, of an action movie, actually. It's more of an action movie, but Freddy is now more of his uh, dark slapstick yeah. version yeah. that came off of Freddy's Dead. Okay? Is that when he got slapstick? He was in the last one? No, he was... A, Slowly transitioning. Okay. Four is the tipping point. Like, four is where they're, like, smack in the middle. Okay. Where there's still some horror elements to it. But then, when you get to the fifth movie, you're like, well, yeah, of course, you would get to that. You would go and you'd make it full on. It's basically like a gore comedy, so to speak. Because, like, this first Nightmare, I have started once. So I saw the beginning. Okay. And I saw the end once on TV. Oh, interesting. Okay. Where the hood comes up in the car and they yeah, drive yeah. away and everything. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen it all the way through. So when I watched it all the way through last week, I was shocked by how dark and just creepy Freddy was in that. Because I'm used to that slapstick. Exactly. Exactly. Right? I was like, the there's no no part, fun in this at all. The only part that kind of threw me uh, was right at the beginning it's first half hour when they do the shot in the alley yeah. and they have him extend his arms out. Ah, that's a cool shot. It's a cool shot, but it was one of those where it was like, it was just kind of weirdly jarring so soon. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of establishing that he can kind of do whatever he wants, they yeah. just kind of throw it up and we're like, boof. And it kind of yeah. looked goofy in my opinion. Yeah. It looked cool, but at the same time, it was, it was like, it was a cool shot. And then I was, as soon as he moved, I was like, oh, that looks goofy. Yeah. Kind of looks Because it kind of like, it was. Woo! It wasn't staged <laughs> yeah. properly, so it, yeah. look, it looked like it was it's all like shitty extended prop. arms and then scraping. It's all like <laughs> it's wobbly, wiggly arms. <laughs> yeah, and it's almost like you'd be like, uh, "Okay, you're gonna kill me." Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever, floppy arms. But it's 1984. I'll, I'll give it to you guys. That's right. That's pretty. You much tried. It. You tried your best. That said, the practical effects in this are insane. Well, uh, before you go any further, like even just the fact you're saying like. He's a very dark and creepy looking dude. Yeah. Like, he looks like he's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I like that they don't really try to show his face too much. Mm -hmm. um, I love that, uh, I this is one where, like, like, I'm talking about Michael Myers stalking them. This one, like, I love the fact that it's like, he gets more energy, the more scared you are. So that's why he's teasing with him. Yeah. That's why he's not just immediately being like, I'm in your dreams. Eh, you're dead. Mm -hmm. It's the whole presentation. It's the boiler room. It's like, you know, taunting you. Tina. Yeah. Tina. Come here, Tina. You know, and then that fucking nursery rhyme. Yeah. It's, yeah. Craven wrote this. And I was like, oh, okay, man. Craven is pretty, pretty clever with this screenplay. I think, was it, he had a dream of a guy with knife hands? And that's just... And then, like, he was like, what if the guy was in your dreams? <laughs> if I remember <laughs> correctly, it was kind of like that. He woke up and was like, oh, God, that's scary. What if he was in your dreams? Boo! Yeah. There, there we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Whew. Let's get that movie out. Yeah. That's got to be a rough one, too. Like, I, I was thinking about this, like, uh, with Stephen King, or just writers in general. Could you imagine, like, having something in there? And you have to get it out. You know what I mean? Like, and I thought about this too, like, you know, with stand comedy bits that I write or even just like comic book characters that you create and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, actually it does kind of just, you 
kind of have to get it out. It's it's but hard. You're it's a hard. Horror writer. I okay. Well, I've written three screenplays, full screenplays from beginning mm-hmm. to end. It's hard because you got all those images in your mind that you're like, but now you have to connect it. And yes. It's that part where you're like, all right. Yeah. How are we going to connect these scenes? And now you got to create. So yeah. It's like, if I wake up and I had an amazing dream and I'm like, I got to write that. I can go around and say, boom. And now how do I connect all this? Yeah. It's hard. Of course it is. It's hard. And and you're never going to get it right on your first try. At all. Oh, no? Oh, so I shouldn't even try then? I did. Clip was eight drafts. No, no, I'm saying I shouldn't try because if Hells I'm not, yeah, you should try. But I might not get it. If I'm not going to get no. it done on my first try, then what you, the fuck? You will you get do? it done. But the one you do in your first try will not be the one show. Well, no, of course not. No. No, no of course not. And that would be amazing. Um, okay, so, right from the get-go, you're, you're like, it's creepy, it's dark, yeah. it's scary. Yeah. That's the other part, too, which I like, is that it's scary. Yeah, because Search Your Dog is playing with uh, Annie, right? Is that her name? Uh, no. Tina. Tina. Tina, right. Annie was the last person. Um, yeah, because in the last movie, you got to hear the phrase, Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Oh, you love that. I, love I think that. you've done that one before, too. Uh, are you I've done, okay? I've okay. done it variations of it, too. <laughs> Kenny, are you okay? I was actually singing okay? that song earlier today. I love I don't know why. That's one of my favorite songs of all time. I love both versions. Though. I love both versions. I love Alien Ant Farm. Yep. And I love the uh, actual Michael Jackson. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> so, it's, it's coming up. I guess you could just, you could also say, Tina, are you okay? Are you okay, Tina? Yeah. She's not. It goes with it. Yeah. She doesn't. Tina was okay at the beginning. Tina's dead now. I love right at the beginning when they do that shot and like he slashes her and her blouse is ripped and like she's just dreaming and her fucked up mom is just like, hey, so, um, well, maybe cut, trim your nails or maybe don't dream so hard because yeah. she looks and there's like the four slash marks. Um, yeah. Trim like, your nails because. That's believable. I was like, what a shit mom. And then immediately goes to Vegas for the rest of the movie. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I liked right away when Tina's like trying to, she's like, yeah, I drink about this dude with like knife hands. And then like, because they're all like kind of talking about how they had nightmares and stuff. Mm-hmm. And they almost don't want to say that they all had like similar dreams at the beginning. And then eventually like, of course, with. Uh, it gets out, yeah. With, uh, what's his name? Well, no, Tina ends up having another dream. Yeah. But also, uh, Nancy starts having dreams. Nancy's having the dreams, too. She's, no, she's having the dreams, but she's also, like, now they start talking about Johnny's him. the only one not having the dreams. He's the only one not having the dreams. What the hell's the boyfriend's name, then? The other guy in the prison? Um, Rod. 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 Yeah. yeah, so he tells Nancy that, and Nancy's like, oh shit, we're all at dream books. Yeah, day. well, because at first, like, at first, uh, Tina is trying to find out if anyone's having the same dream as her. And Nancy's saying, ah, we're all having dreams. I was having, I had a nightmare too, it's no big deal. Mm-hmm. It was, it wasn't until uh, later, when they have this sleepover, that Nancy, or that Tina starts describing the dream, and Nancy's like, I kind of had a similar dream like that too. And then... You know, of course, Rod and, and Tina go and have sex, and he's just like, yeah, I had a nightmare too, okay? No big deal. Yeah. And goes to sleep, and then, of course, they have that horrifyingly cool death scene. That's what I'm talking about. Like, when she starts fucking getting butchered in front of Rod's eyes. And all around the room. On the wall, on the ceiling, and I was just like, this is 1984, and this looks fucking insane. This looks insane! Like, older guys... Looks pretty rough today. I love it, but it looks pretty rough. It does. Well, you actually. watch something like this, and you're like, "Older guys looks like, pretty rough." Wow, how the it's still fuck creepy did you pull it off? I think older guys is still creepy for me because it creeped me out so much as a kid. Yeah, that I'll never know. Oh, I love older guys. Older guys is so good. Even the second one was really good. Yeah, I really like the second one. Those are good movies. Um, but yeah, like movies from that time don't really age well. Like Halloween and Friday Thirteenth aged well because they don't deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah, they don't need to, they don't have to worry yeah. about that kind of shit. This, this movie... This is crazy. Yeah. Like, it is nuts. Like, so nuts that they were pulling this off. Like, without seeing wires or anything, like, she looks like she's fucking worn out, because 
if they would have just showed that, her just going like that, I'm like, okay, well, it's a set and they're rotating. But they showed it from Rod's, like, yeah. from, like they showed Rod's back of his head. Exactly. And like, he's in the room watching this. Like, how that, the fuck you do it? That part's really cool. Uh, when Freddy is now starting to look towards Nancy. Yeah. And there's this scene where her crucifix falls off the wall. Yeah. And she just kind of puts it off to the side. And then you see him push through the wall like it's a bubble type thing. And yeah. I was just like, oh, that is fucking scary. But again, we're talking special effects. And you're just like, that's a nuts special effects. Like, that's insane to yeah. pull that one. Yeah. But it looks so good. Yeah. Like, oh. It's it's aged well. Like, oh, it yeah. looks good. It, it doesn't look good. like it's from 84. No, besides the hairstyles or something. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Soundtrack but choice. Soundtrack. Too. Yeah, I mean, that kind of stuff ages me. Whatever. Right. That's, it's always going to happen. It's always going to happen. You know, there's going to come a time where uh, there's yeah. going to be no more cell phones because it's all going to be, like, literally in your clothes. Yeah. So when we watch movies, we go, oh, yeah, people, like, did this to talk to people instead of this. <laughs> I think about these movies, like, if cell phones existed at the time, how much it would have changed the story of all these? It fuck a lot of things up. Wow. It's like, I'm having crazy nightmares about a guy with knife hands. Let's go on Twitter and hashtag Freddy. See if anyone else, <laughs> yeah. see if anyone else is talking about it. <laughs> oh, you got the nightmares too? <laughs> oh, it's not just in this town. It's yeah. everywhere? <laughs> what? Crazy. Hashtag Kruger lives. Do they establish, because I watched this, and maybe I wasn't paying attention enough, but do they establish where Elm Street is? No. I don't think so. so I like, don't remember. This, it was Freddy live on Elm? Does Nancy live on Elm? Like, he kind of, like, stalks them all in different areas. It's no, they're all on Elm Street, though. They're all on Elm Street? They're like, all their on houses Elm Street. are all in the same street. Yes. Because, like, uh, what's his face? The school is on Elm Street. Like, everything is on Elm Street. I think, well, I don't know about the school. Like, he's haunting them oh, anywhere and everywhere. I really wish you wouldn't have brought this up, because now I'm just like, did you just break the movie for me? <laughs> Like, I was trying, like, why is it Elm Street? Like, why is it not, like, a nightmare in Elm City or something? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, I know. Because I don't remember seeing a sign, like an Elm Street sign or anything in the movie. So I, I was going to look that up before we did this. But um, I forgot. I don't know, actually, because I always kind of look at it like, uh, well, Elm Street in the original movie, I think it was supposed to just kind of look like any sort of suburb. Okay. So it could happen anywhere. Uh, also, it's just a cool title. <laughs> it is a cool title. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a cool title. It's just... I think it was in... Uh, so, it's kind of like, wait, dead. if he's only haunting Elm Street, then just move on to the street. Well, I, I think Freddy's <laughs> Dead references that. The character says something like, yeah, we're not even on Elm Street, or something like that. And then he literally like shoots a sign up through the ground, and it's uh, on Elm Street. Everywhere is an Elm Street. <laughs> or something to that effect, and I was just like, okay, well, fuck you. I remember when I was a kid, and my dad used to take us trick or treating to my uh, grandparents' Levitsky's. We walked around that neighborhood, and there was one road called Elm Street. And, and I was like, like nope. I am not trick or treating on that road. Nope. I am not going down there. Yeah, because all you need is, like, one dude that dressed up like Freddy to be like, come here, motherfucker. <laughs> you like, why would you say that? <laughs> I got your candy right here. Stop doing this. <laughs> Every uh, year I wet my suit. <laughs> um. Okay, so I don't feel so bad now. I was like, Chris is kind of a Freddy expert. He'll know where Elm Street is. I never actually thought to look into the actual like location of the place. Yeah. Because I didn't even care enough. Like, even, it'd be cool even if like, Craven, when he had that dream, if he was on Elm Street when he had the dream, he's like, well, I'm making that the title. Yeah, maybe, but like, it only works within the realm of that area because of the, the way the plot works, right? Yeah. Because this is a child killer yeah. that got off on a fucking technicality. Yeah. So the parents are just like, okay. And they took it in their own hands and fucking killed That's him. That's why I'm thinking maybe he lived on Elm Street when he killed him. It's possible. Might as well. I mean, yeah, because he even kills her on the jail cell. Like, I don't know. I want a Freddy fan to comment down below and let me know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Where is I'm Elm Street? To hear this. Uh, yeah. yeah. But even just, uh, like, I remember watching, or I think I read an article or something, and originally they were going to actually have him be a child molester. Mm -hmm. But I think Craven was like, well, he's already killing kids. Like, that's bad enough as it is. 
So let's just leave it at that. And I think even at that time period, like in the 80s, that's hugely controversial to mm-hmm. even mention that. Yeah. You know? And uh, so much so that when I watched the remake... And they really dive into it with the remake. They full on, they full on label him a child molester. Yeah. And they actually, they even have him make references to doing it. Mm-hmm. And I remember being like, ah. Yeah. Like, and I, and like when I watched that, I remember that interview and I remember thinking to myself, no, they were right. Like, that's, it's bad enough he's killing kids. Mm-hmm. You know, and bad enough killing kids the way he's doing it. It's not like he's just uh, smothering them or whatever. Like, he's cut them up with this makeshift fucking goblet with of knives. Four knives, yeah. Uh, five, five knives. Yeah. And, yeah. <clears throat> they reference four a lot because he's doing this, right? Yeah. But it is. Well, he's going on the thumb, yeah. too, yeah. But it's like, it's like, that is rough, and I remember just being like, that's too much. That's too much. Because then you have yeah. that, you have to, because then, of course, they deal with the psychological aspect of them covering up the memories of them being molested by this guy, and it's just like, this is a heavier movie than it needs to be, <laughs> you know? I know, I thought that when I watched the remake, I was like, eh, we've entered disturbing territory. Yeah, we're now we're at that point where it's just like, this is... Like, I, I know Freddy Good thing they didn't scary. show anything like that, because then I would have been like, ah, oh, oh, yeah. fuck. No. Um, although, I gotta say, though, as far as casting go, I was disappointed the movie didn't do as well, because... Uh, James Earl Haley was a great choice to take over as Freddy. No, it's Jackie. Jackie. Jackie Earl. Jackie Earl. Earl. Haley. Yeah. Haley? Yeah. Haley. I believe it's Haley. Jackie. I just remember Jackie Earl. Was yeah, he had a nice little run there for a bit, because he did Watchmen, too, and he was popping up in all types of things. I think he was in Semi Pro as well. Yeah. <laughs> he's just a great actor, and I was surprised he's a great he could actor. do more. Mm-hmm. You know, like, sure, he's a shorter guy, but. That's why I was so pissed that Human Target got canceled on TV. Oh, that was such a good show. Such a good show. I really liked that show. Yeah. I forgot he was on that show. Yeah, he was. Oh. He was really good on that show, too. It's a great. Oh, great you cast. know what? Because I watched, I watched all of the first season. Yeah. But then I, I watched the second season in, like, clumps for whatever reason. I can't remember. Why? This is before we could record everything and mm-hmm. stream everything. Yeah, I was really disappointed that that show only went two seasons. And number two, season two, you can't find anywhere. It's not streaming. They didn't even release it on DVD. Whoa! Yeah, you can't watch season. That's two. gross. Unless you download it. That's dumb. I know. Because that, that show was so good. That was a really good show. I, I really enjoyed that show. Like one and done episodes, yeah, a exactly. couple of two parters, yep. but they were all really great. The chemistry great chemistry awesome. between all three of them. The cast was great. Like, yeah. fuck. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Now yeah, I remember. Yeah, well, now what, I'm what was that guy's name? Mark something, right? The main guy? Mark oh, Strong? No, not Mark Strong. Mark no, Strong's the other guy. I can't remember. But I remember thinking like, oh, that guy would be an awesome Captain America. That was, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, yep, that guy's Captain America. Yeah. Although, the Evans Captain America, I'm like, that's going to be a hard one to top. Because that was the first time I made the connection that, because we always look at Captain America as being like he's in his mid thirties, but he would be in his early twenties, so mm-hmm. he would look like a young guy, just juiced up for like the next seventy years. So I was like, yeah, okay, this works. That works. This works. Yeah. <clears throat> you so, think about it like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hard one to talk though, that Evans. It'll be a while before they try. Well, it all depends on how well uh, uh, Val Cap and Winter Soldier pan out. I have high hopes, though. Out of all those shows, that one I want to watch, I want to watch Hawkeye. I want to watch uh, WandaVision, too, because I love Scarlet Witch and their superheroes. I don't know about that. It's weird, though. It is. It's weird. I think she's going to kind of crack and go crazy. Because apparently WandaVision will lead right into the new Doctor Strange, because she's in it. That'd be interesting. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Um, I'm calling now reverse no more new mutants. She's going to bring the mutants in. Yeah, you said that on the last, I think it was the last can yeah. but I have to agree. I think yeah. that's actually a pretty easy way of doing it. Yeah. You know? House of M. She, it could even just be like, more like me. Yeah. And then boom, you got mutants. Yep. Yeah. All over the world. Yep. Somewhere in Canada, mm-hmm. someone's popping their claws for the first time. It's ah! Goddamn! That'd be a tough one, because would he be a library for like 100 years? Don't think about it too hard, Captain. I'll try not to. Because yeah. he'd be too busy going like, snicked. Hey, Bob, pass me that cigar. 
Oh wait, I don't smoke anymore. Disney. He's <laughs> <laughs> got the Popeye candy sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nicotine patches is trying to quit. <laughs> or just vaping. Oh god, don't vape it. They make Wolverine vape. <laughs> Ugh. Actually, I, I'd be like, I'm canceling you now, Disney. If they make I'm, any, I'm done if they you. make any actor vape, like any superhero vape, like I'd be like, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm actually like, I'm okay with the concept of them looking at having uh, person, people of color, be uh, Xavier and Magneto. I'm okay with that. But if they make them a person of color and vapors, I'm out. I'm fucking out. I'm more okay with with Xavier. Uh, Magneto, I'm kind of like, ah, I'm going to have a Because he's really, like... Xavier... Him being Jewish and everything, it's like... It's well, that's the thing. Ugh. Yeah. The, so, with Magneto, he has to be... He's got to be Jewish. Because right. that's so tied to the reason why he is like this. Yeah, and I feel like... If Whereas, I agree, that, Xavier's race can be changed like that, and it won't be that big a deal. No. I In fact, if... If they don't change it, I'm not going to be like, oh, God. In fact, the only reason I don't want them to change it is I know it will affect the comics. And that, that would piss me off. Because that's what Marvel does. Yeah, it would be really weird that all of a sudden they'd be all like... Sudden oh, I have a son with this black woman, and here's uh, Charles Xavier Jr. He's going to run the uh, show now. You know what? He's actually brain dead, and yeah. my Phantom X body's breaking down, so yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, White jump Nick, into that. White Nick Fury's out on that island. I'm going to go hop on with him and never see you again. See ya. No, he'll just jump in. He'll yeah. take his psyche. <laughs> put it in that because that's what he's done with the Phantom X spot. Right, right, right. Right? That's actually the theory right now is the reason why Xavier is acting like this is because it's uh, more Phantom X than Xavier. Mm. The other theory that I heard was that it's actually Moira in Xavier's body trying her best to be Xavier while at the same time with what she knows of the, the future, mm -hmm. trying to steer them in the right direction. The Queen's crazy. It is insane the shit he's doing. The worst part about it, I don't like the costumes. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I don't really mind the costume, but... I hate I, Cyclops. Classic, classic, classic. I don't mind Cyclops. I it's hate Cyclops. It's better Cyclops than that Cyclops. fucking X on his face that they were doing the last few years. Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Oh, that X on the face was stupid. I hated that so much. I liked it. I don't like. I liked it because I felt it suited his uh, Magneto esque. Uh, I, mean, I guess it was dumb. In your opinion, <laughs> it was dumb, but I, I think it's better than My this one. My opinion is more right than yours. It's okay. That's fair. That's fair. Marvel girl. I don't understand the the classic Marvel girl costume coming back to it. I don't get that one either. Like that was so sixties. I, I don't know why it's that again. Yeah. I also like. I, I, I guess it's one of those where I'm like, it's too comic book costume. It's too costumey. Too costume. All of them are too costumey. She came back in that cool black and, or uh, blue and red costume, which is kind yeah. of like a spin on her nineties one. Yeah. And I loved it. And now she's like, oh, no, I'm gonna wear a skirt and a face mask again. What? Yeah, I don't know. Why? I don't get it. It's just one of those where I'm like, okay, once like you get a big chunk trade, then yeah. I'm gonna read it. Yeah. I was reading it weekly, and then I'm like, ah, this. It's a lot. Because it's a, like, if you don't read one and two and then read three. Or no, what I'm, no, you have to read one and two before you read three. So that when three comes out, then you have to read one, two, and three before you read four. Because they're so dense. Yeah. And packed with a whole bunch of shit that you're just like, yeah, I gotta constantly reread. Because so in a trade, you could just be like, yep. I read, I read House of M one and two and Powers. I did. I That's all I've read. So I haven't been to the concert in a bit because you know that was stuff. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna have to reread those when I go and get the rest. We just went on. Yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street, ladies I, and gentlemen. Mm. Hey, we can segue back from Wolverine's claws into Freddy's. Yeah. Snit. Wah! There. Little known sound effect. We don't know that he makes that sound, but it's always wah! Wah! <laughs> wah! Luigi. <laughs> Um, anyway... Back to Fred... Yeah, Fred Krueger. It's crazy that the cast, like, his name in the credits is Fred Krueger. Well, because that's his name. But Fred Krueger. They don't refer to him as Fred once. They call him uh, Freddy the no, whole movie. No, 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 no. Nancy call, calls him Fred. She calls him Fred. I thought she said Freddy. Nope, she calls him Fred. Fred. She says Fred Krueger. She says that. Come on, Fred. Right. He calls she, himself Freddy. He calls himself 
Freddy. He calls himself And then Freddy. from 2 on, it was Freddy. Well, yeah. Because it's stuck. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite parts... Actually, my favorite thing in the whole movie is when... Now, she's starting to read up on survival stuff. Mm. And she's starting to formulate a plan to... Because no one believes her at this point. Yeah. You know, the people that do are dying. Um, so, like, when she's, like, talking to her boyfriend, and she's like, okay, so I need you to do me a favor. I need you to be with me, okay? I'm gonna go to sleep, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna try and bring him back. Or no, she brings the right. hat back. When she brings the hat back, she starts putting the yeah. ones together. I so, can... now she's thinking, uh, we'll bring him back into our world, and then you'll mock him out, we'll stop the killings, and everything's right here. You're just like, this is fucking crazy that you thought of this. And not only does she do that, but she looks at the survival stuff, mm -hmm. more so, to make sure that she can actually do this stuff. So even when you have that, like, Home Alone-type little montage of her, like, fucking... Yeah, it's very Home alone Yeah, you know, the light bulb with gunpowder in yeah. it. I was like, oh, shit, the fucking sledgehammer? Yeah. I was like, this is crazy. Like, this is some really cool shit. And then when she realizes that she's pretty much got to do it herself, I was like, oh, that's tough. That's tough. And she's, like, pleading with her dad to, like, just believe her. Also, cool part about her dad, John Saxon, mm -hmm. you know where he's from? He looks very familiar. Uh, oh, oh, Quantum Leap? No. No. Well, where do I know him from? It's a movie. Fuck. Because I was watching it, I was like, I, I know this guy. What's he from? What's he from? You want to take one more guess? I'll give you another hint. It's uh, one of the most famous Kung Fu movies in the world. Enter the Dragon! Yes! That's yes! Right. That's where I know him from. I saw the name John Saxon. I was like, I forgot you were in this movie. That's where I know this him is from. Great. I was, I was yeah. disappointed he didn't like cry, kick anybody, but whatever. He's playing a different role. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I was just like, oh yeah. But like, even just that that part where she's like, okay, daddy, like, so you're gonna wake me up in ten minutes, right? And he's mm -hmm. like, yeah, like whatever, fine. And then yeah. when she brings him into the house and he's not there right away, she's like, oh, I'm crazy. I was like, oh shit. So like. Up to this point, the things that I really liked about this movie is they talk about sleep deprivation. They talk about the dreams. Like, you have to have dreams, otherwise you go crazy. Mm -hmm. But if you can't sleep because, you know, something in your dreams is killing you, that's going to drive you crazy because of the sleep deprivation. Um, even just the, the whole, like, like, it's almost like a... The part with Rod where he's explaining to her, like, she's like, I, I couldn't see the guy. But he was definitely killing her, and he had, like, blades and stuff, and he's like, the guy from my dream and stuff, and that's when she's like, oh, okay, so we're all having the same dream, this guy's trying to kill us, so she's trying to figure everything out, like, at that point is where I really start to get behind the movie, because now she starts leading the movie. She goes to her parents, and she says, hey, like, the guy's name is Fred Krueger, I know this, because I took his hat mm -hmm. with me through the dream, and then yeah. they're just kind of like, uh, like, the one scene where they're putting her in the car, and she's just like, he's got, like, a red, like a big hat, and he's got his blades that he made himself in a dirty red and black sweater, and both parents are like, uh, you know, shit, that sounds familiar. Oh, just get in the car. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't worry about it. And then when she's talking to her mom about it, she's like, yeah, like I brought it in. And she's like, ah, it's nothing. Freddy, uh, Fred Krueger can't hurt you because he's dead. Mm -hmm. And then, like, literally the next scene, she's like, no, he's dead because we killed him. That's how... That's how I always said Here's his glove. I kept it. That I, part, I was like, why would you keep that? Why the fuck would you keep that creepy fucking why thing? Why would you keep that? That murdered all those children. Why would you just... Not only that, that's evidence that you murdered a man. Yeah. And just yes, keep, he should have been keep killed. Keep in your basement. But you just kept in your basement... Wrapped up in a shirt. For what? Right? So I was just... That part, I was like, that's dumb. Uh -huh. That's dumb and weird. Uh, they even, like, do the whole, like, alcoholism thing for the mom. Which yeah. is, that's how she's dealing with the fact that they killed this guy. I was like, that's... There's a lot of, like, moving parts here that's all really realistically done. Mm -hmm. Aside from the fact that you had a dream killer. <laughs> but uh, I love the part where they're on the bridge and she's, like, uh, she's talking about the survival stuff. And then Johnny Depp's just like, yeah, well, there's this tribe that they talk about dream skills, you know, and... So there's things you can do in dreams, like if you're falling in a dream, you just pretend like you're falling into something really nice and pleasant, and then it's like, well, what if there's, like, what if you create a monster in your dream, what do you do? Oh, you just turn your back on it, and you take all its power from them. I was like, oh, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then later when she actually does that to kill him, I was like, that's fucking great. Yeah. Um, the only part that I didn't like about the entire movie was the ending because it's a total dream ending. I didn't like that. I know like it's a, a sequel bay ending. And that's fine, but I, it was that was the one because it's the first movie. It's that's the one where I'm like, yeah, you could have had it end with her just being like, okay, dad, yeah, let's sleep somewhere else tonight, right? Because mm-hmm. they just lost her mom and stuff like that. Instead of having the dream sequence where everyone's back, yeah, you know, and then of course the fake out with the car. I was like, ah, although <laughs> when he grabs the mom into the house through the window, <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. The longest arm in the world. Yeah, and the fakest Ooh. doll ever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Adrian watched that with me. She just burst into tears. It's fucking hilarious. She's like, oh my god, it's so bad looking. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. For everything that looked amazing in the movie. That part. Uh, or, or even just something as simple as having like Nancy so stressed out that her hair goes gray. Yeah. Which they kept in A New Nightmare. Because she was in A New Nightmare. Yeah. You gotta watch A New Nightmare. But she's... The actress in it. Exactly. Yeah. And Wes Craven and Robert Englund. And they're all in it. They're all in it. It's like Last Action Hero, but horror style. Yeah, actually, that would be a good way to pitch that movie. Yeah. Because it is super meta. One thing that I thought was really interesting was they talked about uh, earthquakes in this movie. And they had earthquakes in the new nightmare to symbolize the cracking of her psyche. Ah. Yeah, I was like, fuck, man, that Wes Craven is, is nuts. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine that, watching your own movie and going, oh, you know what, let's put that in the new one. I like that. Anyway, that's the, oh, such a good movie. Only four deaths in this. Oh, yeah. Four. Oh, he's killing the kids of the people that killed him. you think that. Yeah, I know. But he's yeah. so creepy. You may expect more, but, that's, but he put so much time into this fucking... That's movie. right, because he had, what, three shots at killing Tina. Yeah. He had four or five shots at trying to kill Nancy. Mm-hmm. One shot at Johnny Depp. He took him out right quick. Yeah, just... He had two shots with Rod. At least two. Possibly three. I only, I, I only think because he referenced the one dream. Why was he, he him in the not going after Johnny Depp? Though? Like, why was Johnny not having the nightmare? I don't know. And then if he's not having the nightmares, how'd he die? Doesn't he have to dream of him in order to die? Yeah, but I think it's, I felt like it was one of those where, like the scene where they go to, the, where they go to the, the, court, the jail. Yeah. They're, she's in her dream. Yeah. She also doesn't realize that Depp's dreaming, too, because he's in the dream with her. Right. And they go, and they go to see Rod. Rod's in his... They're, in, they're dreaming, but Freddy's now going to kill Rod in front of him, in front of her, but he's in his dream, so it's kind of, like, all-encompassing. Right. I feel like right. it's one of those where... So her dreaming with Johnny in the room brought him into Freddy's world. It's just, yeah, it's just kind of like that. It's so that just, was his introduction to Freddy, and now, now Freddy can easily just hop into him. Yeah, I feel like that's that's what it is. But it's also okay. like, we're talking like dreams, so it could just be like, it could even be something as simple as he was never on his radar because he wasn't the kid of the parents that killed him. Yeah. But because of Nancy, he was like, oh, no, I'll just kill her. I'll kill him because... To so fuck with her. Yeah, to make it easier for him to kill her. Mm. You know? <clears throat> Because it's like they play it up very much like he's just killing the people that are tied to that. Yeah. It's only later that it's just, it, it expands beyond that to him just becoming more and more powerful because of the. the I laugh yes. at Johnny's dad in this. Oh my god. Oh, he's like, he's sleeping. He'll talk to you later. Is it? Yeah. And I was just like, this never is totally, mind. My dad totally pulled that shit. To never mind. Kid. He's out in the front of oh, the oh, yard yeah. drinking a beer, staring at the fucking house, just. I don't like that bitch. I don't like that bitch at all. And then it's just like, hey, what do you, you don't need to stare. I don't think it's a good idea that he hangs out with her. And then, yeah, I love that part where he's just like, sleeping click. What the fuck? You just gotta tell these kids how it is. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my god, it's sounds like my dad. Yeah. That was a good laugh. So, yeah. So that's Nightmare? I got nothing else to say. I've okay. said all the things I, I like to say. I gotta watch number three and, and New Nightmare. I gotta say that, like, Heather 
Lane Camp. Her acting was a little rough at times. I didn't think so. I, I found a little rough at times. I didn't realize you were an acting expert. Oh, I am. <laughs> Even though I've said plenty of times, people are shitty actors. Uh, I, I guess maybe, like for me, I think it's because I, I like the movie so much that I can look past some of the stuff. I'm just, but I thought she was all right. I'm a fan of Final Girls and horror movies. So, but it, it's, it's hard for me because, like, I always compare everyone to Jamie Lee Curtis, which is awful because she was, grew up in a, a family of actors. Yeah. Right? Dumb. But, I mean, if we're talking, like, final girl characters, I would argue that Nancy is a much more driven and better final girl than uh, Laurie Strode is. Right. Right. She does but, get better at the end of the movie, though. Yeah. Her earlier in the movie, though, I, I, I don't know. I found okay. a little rough at times. All right. Like, I, the actress that played Tina, I thought she was that good. I, yeah. Compared I, to I, the, I, compared I thought to she was really good. So, I like the one part I thought was the, my favorite part was that the entire town is like white suburbia. And then you have like the one super Italian rock star guy with leather jacket. Like, <laughs> literally, like, hey, yeah. come on. <laughs> why don't you suck my dick? Or no, it's like, a, I had no erection with your name on it. And she's like, my name's four letters. How could it possibly have fit? And you're like, that's a good burn. That's that was a, good a really burn. That's a good burn. It's a sick burn. But like, and even in the funeral, oh, that was one of the part I thought was funny. Tina, no funeral. Yeah. He dies, funeral. Yeah. You get to see a super mafia family. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is, but I was like, he gets a funeral, he gets a funeral. Tina, her best friend. Yeah. Who she was willing to sleep over at her own house to make sure she didn't have like night terrors. Mm-hmm. Doesn't get a funeral. I was like, oh, this is fucking weird. I guess it's to show that he died, but I watched him get hung. <laughs> I was pretty sure he was dead. Yeah, he died. He died. And he also died while in prison for possibly murdering a girl. Yeah. Well, let's throw a nice funeral for him. Yeah. Well, the funeral is fine. Yeah, the funeral. But it's just, yeah. Tina didn't get a funeral. I don't no, understand no, the funeral. fucking thing. Yeah. Come on. kept having Tina dragged around in a body bag. <laughs> You don't give her a funeral. This poor girl's a bits and pieces. Bleeding out constantly. <laughs> uh, so, Nightmare on Elm Street. Now we head into the final life con of horror. Chucky. It's great. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> and that's been the cast. That's it. Thanks a lot, guys, for coming out. Um, um, I. It's been probably about, I want to say like, since I've seen this movie. Mm, probably longer for me. And uh, But I will say straight up before we start talking about this, I was never really a Chucky fan until Drive with Chucky. No, and I, I can understand why because that's when they start doing the whole Freddy's Dead thing. And now it's the, more... The, a little more comedy. No, and, it's a lot more comedy. This yeah, is more, more of comedy. a... Dark, it, it's comedy horror. Yeah, yeah, and it's more comedy than horror. Mm-hmm. Like, it's more... Like, it's not even scary. It's yeah. just... It's got some gory scenes in it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all. But... Uh, <clears throat> That's when they start to dial it up. So I mean, like, I can, I can get that. I can understand that. What I was struck by, which what I forgot about, was how well the special effects are done with, in regards to when Chucky is actually speaking, mm-hmm. and like you've got like growls, and snarls, and stuff like that. I was like, this is really good. Yeah. Like really, really well done. The other thing that I, I, I forgot was like just how inherently creepy the idea of a possessed doll is. Because like like you can think about it and you've got, you know, a doll just kind of sitting there and next thing you know it falls off the chair and next thing you know it hits you in the fucking face with a hammer and you fall out of a sky rise window. That was a little like I love that scene because... Hey, my package of calls is the hammer. Bunk. Fall back about 12 feet out the window, full force. Bust uh, the glass. Hold up. I'll get to that. The lead up to that scene, I thought, was really good. The lead up was really good. Like, all the little bits when uh, when he's, like, figuring it out and, like, how he can get away with stuff. And they do, like, the little pitter pattern. She's yeah. like... She's like, hey, uh, oh, fuck, I forgot the kid's name. Uh, his name is Andy. Yeah, Andy. Okay. She's like, Andy? And, you know, Andy's like sleeping or whatever. Yeah. And then they do that circular shot where she's like, you know, kind of like doing something, like she's making something. Yeah. And then it just kind of spins around and then she just kind of looks. She's like, what the fuck? Boom. Yeah. That is awesome. When she literally runs back 
backwards out the window. And like, yeah, oh, well, I just, like, flings herself out. Like, I was just like, okay, if the doll had the physical strength of Charles Lee Ray right. as an adult, he still wouldn't physically be strong enough to send her that far, that fast, out that fucking window. He had the strength. That doll had the strength of Charles as an adult. The hammer would crack her skull. And she would have just fell dead. That's right. There'd be no... Yeah. So it's <laughs> like... So, like, that's an aspect of some of the parts where I'm just kind of like... Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Like, if everything leading up to that was just as cheesy, then I'd have been like, I don't know if this is going to be a good movie. Um, and I don't, like, classify this as a horror movie, really. I don't think it's a horror movie. Um, I, I, actually, it's more sci-fi. Like, movie. I would say out of the four... Uh, no, actually, I would say it's a like it's more of a suspenseful thriller yeah. with like supernatural overtones. Mm-hmm. Nightmare is the only full-on horror movie because this is more of a suspense. Actually, this is a horror movie too. These are the two horror flicks. Friday's a horror. No, I think Halloween's more horror than Friday. Well, I think this is more horrifying. I don't know that it's horror, I wouldn't horror classify it as a horror movie though. I wonder what they would classify. Well, these are classified as horror movies. Suspense thriller. I would say this is like a horrifying suspense thriller. I don't know what to Or a stalker movie. Stalker. I don't know what to say. I know that they're they're uh, they're horror movies. They're, they're classified as horror movies. I guess it would make sense because you know why? They're horrifying. Horrifying. <laughs> so they would be horror movies. You know, they're all horror. They're horror, all horror. horror has so many subgenres. It's Every, like everything me- has it's subgenres. Like, it's like metal music. How many different types of metal is there? Oh, speaking and of someone goes, I listen to metal. Well, what kind of metal? Here's the list. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, one of the bands you got to check out is Necrogobblethon. <laughs> Do they sound better than their name? Because that name is hilarious. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good name. Uh, that's a good name. There's, there's two parts to it. First <coughs> and foremost, so the band itself, they actually have a dude dressed up like a goblin. And the same dude has his own talk show called Right Now with John Goblicon. <laughs> so when this is done, I'm going to show you a clip because it's fucking funny. It's funny shit. Necro Goblin. It's so... That's good. It's so ridiculous. Uh. But it's literally like, Hi, I'm John Goblicon, and you're watching Right Now with John Goblicon. And... <laughs> Right here, I have a uh, lead singer from the band, As I Lay Dying. <laughs> and the guy's like, you can see, like, some of them are, like, in on the joke. Some of yeah. them don't get it. They're just kind of like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, oh, man, it's funny. Good music, though. It's actually good music. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Singing about goblins. That's and good. I'm not even kidding. All their songs are about goblins? A lot of their songs are about goblins. <laughs> I love it. So I love it. But yeah, okay. So uh, so yeah. But um, <laughs> what I actually really liked about this movie is right away. So she dies, and uh, actually, part of the reason why I have such a soft spot for this movie is because you're dealing with a single mom, mm-hmm. right? Single mom who is doing her best to make her kid happy. So like when she it's birthday time and he doesn't get the uh, the buddy doll. Yeah. And she and he's like, oh, so she's heartbroken. So she has to like go and go to the sketchy back alley for a fifty dollar like blood stain. <laughs> Which is pretty much the only concept for this movie they kept for the remake. Oh, okay. Alright. You haven't seen the remake yet. No, I haven't. It's it's fucking good. I wanna watch it so bad. The remakes for all of these are awful. The remake for Child's Play is really good. Actually, yeah, I'd have to. I okay, so I, I haven't seen any of these remakes, nor do I have any desire to. This one, I wanted to like it so badly. Yeah. The only thing I liked was Jackie Earl Haley. He was yeah. the only thing I like. I even liked the fact that his nose was melted off because mm-hmm. it makes sense. So yeah. He looked scary. He looked gross. He looked like yeah. He didn't yeah. look like some guy that was literally no. going to be like miming out how he's going to kill you. Yeah. It looked like he was going to kill you. Um. But this, that was the one where when you said that it was really good and it was like a, a remake, so it's, it's, it 
They're almost like a reimagining. It's a total rematch. It's I'm not like, a beat for okay. beat, which I really appreciate because okay. right. these three were all kind of beat for beats. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In like fact, this, if they didn't add the molestation shit yeah. in uh, that one there with the extra added like dungeon in the school part, yeah, it would have been the exact same movie. Like the remake, there's no serial killers, no voodoo. It's just tech gone wrong. Okay. And I, all right. And well, that, that makes age more sense and bones and stuff. It makes more sense to go that route. Yeah. Um, although, having said that, I actually love the voodoo shit in this movie. Yeah. I thought it was just like. You got a killer doll. How does that killer doll happen? It's so out of the blue at the beginning. It's like <laughs> he's just like, "Hey, goodbye, me." And he starts chanting in the department store. I'm like, "What? What the fuck is going on right I now?" Actually, Lightning's just striking. I remember <laughs> when I first watched this movie and they did that right away. I was just like, "Wait, what?" I did the same thing you did. Yeah. I was like, "Wait, what the like, fuck?" The scuzzy looking bank robber dude also knows voodoo. But I do like that. Literally after. Like, after that, once he's starting to get his bearings straight, yeah. he goes back and they explain how he knows that shit. Yeah. I'm glad they... Yeah. So, because the, they weren't just like, dude, uh, what, you don't look into voodoo shit? Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, uh, I like how right away, so, actually, first of all, I love the first, like, the opening sequence, because you have uh, Charles, Charles E. Ray dodging the cop. And Brad Dorr is a great actor. I, he's, he's, he's so one of those, good. Like, underrated guys. You know, forever. it's because it's his face. Yeah, he can only do you don't have bad a, guys. You don't have a lean man face. He can be a bad guy. Yeah, he could be a lean bad guy. He can't be a good guy. He was actually um, a cop in Rob Zombie's Halloween remakes. Oh, but see, that's just stunt casting. Yeah, that's not like no. We got him because he's a great actor. It was mm-hmm. like we got Chucky to play a cop, mm-hmm. right? Um, but yeah, no, he's, he's actually really good. His daughter is really good too. No. His daughter, I mentioned this before, his daughter actually plays the final girl in the last two Chucky movies before the reboot. What's her name? Alexis is on? I wish I remembered that because she was also in, uh, the holistic detective. Right, right, right. I was yeah. telling you about yeah, that where she's the holistic me. assassin, right? Yeah. So whereas the detective, it's like everything will work out for a reason. You just have to see the links. She's literally like, no, I just point my gun and whoever wants, whoever the universe wants me to kill, I kill. That's it. I enjoyed that last Chucky movie before the remake. What was it called? Cult or Curse? Or was it Curse? Cult is, I think. Cult the, is the last one, I think. I think you're right. I think before, Cult is the last before one. Before that was Curse. Because Curse is. Uh, Curse is Dan Mancini, the writer of this. Take him to the reins. Like, yeah, Curse. He, I think he writes and directs. They the kill. Movie. I think they actually kill Andy off finally. No, Andy's in the. In, he's, Andy's in the last one. Okay. He's fucking cuckoo. I, think, I, I have to rewatch them because I think I, I watched them both during my leave space. So I might have bored the two movies together. Cult of Chucky is the last one. What was that saying? Curse? Or? Yeah. Because Cult, which which is the one where Andy's got the Chucky head yeah. in that safe. He's talking to him and shit, right? I think it was Cult. And he fucks with him, too. Like, he stabs him and stuff like that. Cult. He's he's beginning yeah. Cult. yeah, he's torturing the doll. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, because then he ends up in the insane asylum. Yep. That's right. With and then the that's, girl. That's, no, she was in the last one. She wasn't in the last two. She just pops in. Or was she in the last two? She's in the last two. Never mind, don't even reference anything I said. Like I said, during my heavy booze phase. So Anyways, it was enjoyable. But then it was very comedic. They What they were trying to do was they were trying to meld the previous Chucky trilogy with the uh, comedy Chucky trilogy. Because there was three of those ones. It was Bride, Son. Bride Seed. Bride Seed, that's right. Well, it might have been just Bride that and two. Seed. And then it and was then Curse and Cult. That's right, Curse and Cult. That's right, because they were they're trying to build, yeah, blend the five movies together. Uh, and now the TV series that's coming out is going to continue off of Cult. Oh, interesting. They're going to continue that series as a TV show. I don't know how I feel about that one. TV. Then again, I got to rewatch those movies, so I think I might be okay with it. Yeah. But uh, so I like that the cop is the same cop throughout the whole movie. Yeah. Um, Who is Chris Randall? Who worked previously with Tom Holland on Fright Night? I think he's good. Even the remake was good. Remake's really good too. I really like the. But then the remake has like David, uh, David Tennant. David 
Yeah, so good in it. But also Colin Farrell, yeah. who looked like he's having a ball in this movie. Um, fuck, what's his name? Anton Yeltsin. Anton, yeah. yeah. That was great. It was, ab- it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. I straight up was like, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Even the trailer was like, I don't know. And then like it was on TV. Oh, Image and Boots is in it, too. How did I forget that? I think it was uh, five, I missed the first five minutes, and I was just kind of like, oh, David Tennant's in this. Yeah. I'll continue watching. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, everyone's really good in this movie. Anyway, uh, so when they get to the voodoo scene, I was just like, holy shit, this is fucked up, right? Now I'm just like, yeah, all right. But, uh, like, I felt for the kid, Andy, because, like, he has no friends, mm-hmm. right? So now his buddy doll, who's Chucky because his name's Charles, right? Yeah. So that's his new friend. And I was yeah. just like, holy shit, like, this is... Like, it was creepy because you're watching him and he's loving this thing. Like, it's his best friend. Mm-hmm. And the whole time, you're like, that thing's probably going to kill you. That thing is probably going to fucking kill you. You know? <clears throat> um, what the f- was it? Uh, oh, that's right. The, the scene where they skip school. And I remember, like... Yeah, and they go to that sketchy neighborhood. Yeah, and I remember I was just like, what the, what the hell are they doing? But uh, one of the things I thought was really cool was course because of the time right so when they shoot it the kid gets out of school and he's like cold right because he's like yeah it was too cheap now they they probably shot that a bunch of times poor kid yeah these days like the parents would be like you're not shooting that outside cg the fucking steam coming off his mouth that's horseshit (laughs) but that was part of the the thing where i was i was remarking how well the kid was doing because like first you have him and Know, he's your stereotypical kid, absent-minded. But then you also feel for him because he wants this buddy doll so badly because he doesn't have any friends. It's fucking cute when he made breakfast for his mom. And, Super cute. And it was just like Hate sugar it. everywhere. <laughs> the burnt toast with like a... Burnt bucket. toast with a blob of ice cream. I was like, oh, uh, God. Sugar cereal but how are else you to the do brim You're just with like, sugar on top. Oh, thank you so much. This is the greatest thing ever. Happy birthday. It's your birthday, but you made me breakfast. Yeah. That's great. But, uh, yeah, and I remember thinking, like, what the fuck are they doing, right? And then they go, and, and now Chucky realizes exactly what he can get away with, goes to kill one of the guys, mm-hmm. uh, and now he's, he's, he's got to kill this, right? So yeah. it's that guy, yeah. the cop. Yeah. Um, but then when they go to the voodoo stuff, I was like, whoa, like, he's just like, hey, man, I got shot the other yeah. day, and it hurt, and I'm bleeding. What the fuck? And the guy's just like, oh, shit. I guess you shouldn't have told me about your voodoo doll of yourself. You're turning <laughs> human. Okay. How do we stop that? Oh, we can't. What the fuck do you mean? Yeah. You spent all this time teaching me this voodoo shit and we can't fix this? And he's like, well, I guess you could transfer it to somebody else. And then he's just like, oh, awesome. Hey, look what I found. Yeah. And he's like, oh. Like, snap. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, because he didn't want to help him. That's right. Because he's like, you're an abomination. Yeah. You're an affront to God. I was like, that is crazy. And that's awesome that this voodoo guy, mm-hmm. the black arts, was like, no, I'm not helping you. You're yeah. fucking, this is, I have to end your existence to right the world. <laughs> it's just like, snap. I was like, oh, that's brutal. But that was, it was a wicked way they shot it, though. Like, mm-hmm. really, like, looked like shit. Yeah. He's breaking his legs and stuff. And that's when it gets nuts. Like that's when you get to see with the kids in the uh, the psycho house, and he's just like, "Chucky's gonna kill me. He's coming to kill me." And he's fucking bawling. That's where I was like, "I hope he didn't get any like mental issues after this." Like I hope that he was aware enough to be like, "No, it's, this is a movie. Yeah, just a movie. Nothing at all." Because I couldn't get over like the real tears and everything. Like I will so say good. that my least favorite part of the movie is in that psych ward because what kind of Psych ward in the middle of fucking winter doesn't have windows. Oh, your kid sleep in this fucking cell with no windows in the middle of the winter. Yeah, I know that. Also, the like ridiculous lack of security. Yeah, Chuck just get in and out because he crawled up the fucking windows that have no glass. Yeah, that part. Like, what are we in an old style of castle but with even, a dungeon? Like, but even how the kid dekes him out, like it was very easy for him to deke Chucky out. Yeah, to get out of the cell. Yeah. But the part that also, like, 
well, the part that actually kind of got me the most was when Chucky was in the car with the cop. Yeah. And he's stabbing behind the seat. And there's that, like, comedic, like, he's, like, trying to dodge the knife blade. Yeah. And I was like, he'd have got stabbed, like, four or five different times. Like, yeah. there's no way. I mean, he's driving. Aim for the middle. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you're, it, that you're gonna part, hit him. That part took me out of it because I was like, that's, this is. And then he goes under the seat and he's stabbing that's, up. That's and the he part. He's missing his crotch. That's whatever. the part, especially. The, the back ones, I was like, ah, okay. Oh, as soon as he went underneath and was like, stabbing, like, it's up his easy ass, to tell where like, his ass is going to be. Are you fucking for real? Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. And he doesn't even get stabbed once. He doesn't even get nicked. No. I was like, fuck off. Although they made up for that with the really cool scene where he's, like, trapped underneath the car. Yeah. And now he doesn't really know where he is, and it's hard to track him because he's so tiny. But I, I keep forgetting to mention this. I love her right at the beginning when, you know, they're investigating the murder, or the death, right? And his, the cop's first thought is, hey, kid, let me see the bottom of your shoes. Because they're buddy shoes, mm -hmm. right? Because he noticed the tracks. So already he's like, it's the kid. And I like how they were really, like, in the real world, they're like, well, it's the kid. The kid is doing this. And yeah. so when he was in the insane asylum, I was like, it makes sense. Uh, it also made for a great scene because you have the mom, like, almost, like, questioning her sanity by basically going, like, are you real? Like, are you alive? Oh, she's holding it backwards and his head turns around? I, that part I like, but I like when she's like, just answer me. And then she's like, I'm throwing you in the fire. And he's like, you fucking bitch. No, I like the part where she, she's just like, oh, I guess I'm crazy. But then she just like on a whim is like, wait a minute. Yeah. Checks the batteries. Because well, the batteries fell out of the box. The batteries fell out of the box. And so she's, she's like, like, wait a minute. He's just talking to me. Yeah. So then she's like, and then he's just like. Does the spin around? I was like, yeah. oh shit. Yeah. But I love that part. She's like, she's like, I'll, uh, I'll light you on fire. And like, you fucking bitch, I'll fucking kill you. I'll yeah. teach you not to fuck with me. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I was like, whoa, you fucking went crazy. Yeah. And um, I felt like they actually did a really good job of keeping his strength levels normal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, even as he's getting more human. Um, so essentially he's getting weaker because now he can be killed, but I, I thought they did a really good job at that. There was not parts where I was like, hold on a second. In one scene, you're able to like, uh, like literally throw a car, yeah. but then the next scene, you can barely throw a tire. You know, that kind of shit where you're just like, no, no, no you can't play around with that stuff to suit the script. Mm -hmm. So I love it when they, they go, no, 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 he's here and he stays here, right? <clears throat> Um, this it's still a really good movie, but it's not as good as I remember. That's the one thing that I gotta say. Like, yeah, and then the whole end is like straight out of Terminator. The whole end though is cool though. It's cool, but it is so straight out of Terminator. Well, <laughs> like his arms getting blown, he's still coming. Like he gets on fire, and like still coming. And I love the part where now he's down to like one leg, one arm. He's yeah. torched. Yeah. And he can he still managed to like grab the fucking throat and he's like, ah, I'll fucking kill you, I'll fucking kill you. And then like they finally like uh blow his head off. Yeah. <laughs> and then they blow it through the heart. Which I thought that was actually really cool. I thought that was a nice touch where they were like the uh, heart, heart type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. Yeah. They had, had a nice little explosion. Yeah. Um although I still kinda like like, after all that happened, and the cop is, like, kind of almost, like, joking around with the head, I was like, what the fuck is wrong with people? Like, if <laughs> if you made me believe that a psycho doll was trying to kill you, yeah. my first thought would be, like, really? This thing? This thing was trying to kill you? This headless... Let's go throw it around. Like, no, I wouldn't want to touch that thing. I wouldn't want to touch it at all. Yeah, um, yeah so, like, I remember it being like a, a great movie. It's still a really good horror flick, but there are too many. There's a couple of things where I'm just kind of like, uh, I don't know. And it's probably a sign of the times type of thing where they're probably just like, yeah, no one's really gonna think about it. Mm. Who knows? Maybe the insane asylum was like that with no windows. I mean, maybe, but why the fuck would you put a kid in there then? He's crazy, and their thought process on crazy people wasn't like. I, yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't like, I no, guess. you gotta be cool and understanding. It was just like, whatever, weirdo, get in the cell. But then Andy gets out of there, 
goes down like four levels, hides in a room, and Chucky just knows where he is. Yeah, like that like, sequence was uh, was annoying to me because it yeah. was because you're right. Like I remember thinking like if he's on the outside, or like even when he got deep down. It's not like you see Chucky kind of see glimpses of where he's going. So mm-hmm. he's like, yeah, it's just, he's gone. The kid's yes. gone. And the next thing you know, ah, I found you. It was like, yeah. there was a couple of those gotchas that I was like, those are scary. They make no sense. In a room without a window, by the way. Yeah. When he was on the outside going through windows. Yeah. So it's like, those are scary, but they make no sense. Yeah. Okay. So you're like, ah. But if you think about it, then you go, ah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I wanted to say like, was up higher because I'm such a huge fan. This one bumped every single one of them. Halloween? This one, Halloween bumped Nightmare on Elm Street because originally coming in, I would, I was like, I yeah, was going yeah, to literally yeah. sit there and yeah. say, look, if we're going to rank this right now. I'm ranking this here. Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street. Yeah. Child's Play. Yeah. Halloween. Actually, I probably would have said Friday the 13th and then Halloween. Yeah. Now, I'm looking at it. It's like, it's Halloween. Nightmare on Elm Street, Child's Play, and then it's Friday the 13th. Yeah. Whereas me, it's it's right there. Yeah. Only Friday, Nightmare Child's. That's my order. Yeah. Order of release. Now, having said that, I will re-watch Child's Play for sure. I'm yes. really excited to watch the remake, though. I'm really excited. It's really good. Because, and Mark Hamill does a great job. Because it reminds me of the remake of The Fly. Because there's the original black and white one where it deals with teleportation and it does deal with them sw- like swapping, but it's like the, the fly swaps his head and his claw yeah. with the human. So now the human's got a fly head and a fly claw. I understand, like, okay, visually looks really cool at that time period, right? And like the flip side was the reason why they couldn't get switched back was because because fly guy, he gets killed by a fly swatter. Yeah. Right? But then you watch the, uh, the remake and you're like, whoa! It took the template, made its own movie. That, that's still one of the scariest movies I've ever seen in my entire oh, life. Oh, well, yeah. But speaking of remakes, I forgot to mention something in Halloween. How cool is it that in Halloween they shoot that scene where Jamie and Tommy are watching the movie and it's the thing from another world. Three years later, Tom yes. Farber does a remake for the thing. I actually was like, that's Talk about looking into sweet. the future. That's pretty fucking sweet. That's another movie I gotta watch again. The Thing? Oh, yeah. You know what? The Thing is another masterpiece. Like, it, if Halloween never existed, that would be John Farber's best movie. The Thing. That's so good. It's so, so good. Fucking good. It's so good. I just wanted John Farber to make one more movie with Kurt Russell and Jamie Lee Curtis, since those were his two go tos, but they never actually were in the same movie. That would be really cool. I would like to see his his. I'm I'm leaving movies behind. <laughs> I'm doing this movie with these two. That would be cool. That would be really cool. That would be really cool. But um, so yeah. So as it so stands, icons of horror. Yep, icons of horror. I don't dislike any of these. I I know I was I was I had been thinking about this since we were talking about Friday the Thirteenth. I shouldn't say that it's a garbage movie because it's not a garbage movie. It tries, it's it's different. Yeah, it, and you know what, it, here's, okay, here's the distinction. Sleepaway Camp mm-hmm. is largely a garbage movie. Yeah. Okay? And it's interesting because the similarities are very, very close. Sleepaway, yeah. I, Sleepaway was after Sleepaway Friday. Sleepaway was after, oh, for yeah. sure. I think it's 84, like Nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah, I believe it's 83, 84, something yeah. like that. Yeah. But, so it's... That one, so this one here benefits greatly from the twist being his mom, but that only works if you never watched, like if you were just watching this movie for the first time, yeah. like in 1980, yeah. then it's a twist, but it's not like, uh, it's not like when you watch the other movies, like because we're, we're younger, right? Uh, so we were, we were not around for these movies, so we yeah. were familiar with Jason the Icon. So then, when you find out that that's the that's the twist, then you're like, oh, I feel like the twist works better knowing the character. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so it's not a garbage movie. It is just not as good as the other th- three on this list. Is really, I guess, what I was trying to say. Yeah. 
And and I, I will fully admit that if I watch this without any Halloween in the peripheral, then I'll probably be like, yeah, it's a lot better than I give it credit for. It's just really hard to because Halloween was so phenomenally well done. Mm -hmm. It's so well done that I'm like, I say that I will rewatch it. It's going to be a little while though because it's like I got to like, reset my chakras. It, it's not a movie that I watch every year and I just so happen to watch it twice two years in a row. Because I watched it last year before the uh, 2018 one came out. Which makes sense. I wanted to watch yeah. them back to back. This year I watched it again because we were going to talk about it. But usually I watch it every I don't know, three, four years. Well, I, mean, I think it's because like I was saying, like it, it is definitely one where it's like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because it starts off, like I said, like with you in that first person view. Which is horrifying. I don't ever want to have that happen again. I don't want to be in a first person view where I'm killing somebody. Unless they're a bad guy. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like even that sequence, like in Doom, when at the end sequence of oh, Doom, yeah. Yeah. that was cool because it's it was a sequence a bunch of Doom. Of but this, you're just like, oh, like once I realized what I was about to do, I was like, oh god, I don't even want to watch this, but I had to. And the way they shot it too, where they're like looking at her and then he looks up with a knife. Yeah. Like, oh, look what I'm doing. Exactly. Ah. Like, he's so detached. He's yeah. just like, oh, oh. Yeah. I was like, oh, God. So, yeah. So I think the next time we do this, we'll have to do it where they're all kind of on the same level, where not one is a standout. Because, like, I mean, Halloween was so good that it bumped A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. You know what I mean? A Nightmare on Elm Street is a fucking classic. And that's a master class in a horror movie, but that doesn't hold a candle to Halloween. Um, yeah. I got nothing that has been this year's Halloween special. Thank you, Our everyone. Our third year in a row of doing a Halloween special. For joining us. Yeah. It's exciting. It's and it is. Exciting. I noticed that uh, we actually got through this without ever once talking about uh, uh, the Sony Disney fiasco. No. Because I called it! I fucking called that shit so bad. I forgot you wanted to talk about it. Yeah, that's, yeah. Hey, he called it. I called that shit. Now, granted, I did say, we came to the agreement that it would be after the next movie, that they would decide to, to make the talks. Yeah. I did not think it was going to be so quickly. And, but, well, apparently it was all Tom Holland. I know. Could you imagine that? Can you imagine Tom Holland was just like, well, I guess that's the way it is. It went on his way. Like, it probably wouldn't happen. No. It wouldn't have. No. It would have been this. It probably been closer to what we decided, where it was like the movie came out, it would have done whatever it did, and then yeah. Disney would have been like, "Okay, so." And I feel like Tom Holland is kind of like just like Peter Parker is kind of under Robert Downey Jr.'s wing, in a way. Well, so I think him being I, upset. Yeah, I actually about kind Ryan of look at it like because, like uh, the interviews that I read was essentially what it was was like Holland looked at it like like we got to do it. Like, we gotta do it for the fans. You gotta at least give them an ending. You know, like, at least tie it up, because, like, that was one of the biggest things I said was the worst part, was that it's so jarring. Yeah. Because it's jarring in the sense that now you have an entire MCU that can't reference Spider-Man, who was a huge part of that. Like, nobody in the MCU is looking at it like, I don't know about that Spider-Man thing. They're mm -hmm. all just like, oh, that, that fucker's an Avenger. Yeah. I don't care what you said. You know what I mean? Like, even, like, in Civil War, mutual respect from both sides for Spider-Man. There was none of this, like, eh, they were all just like, okay, yep, there's mm -hmm. something there. Yep. There's something there. And then every other movie after that. But even on the flip side, because of how entrenched Tony and, and Happy, well, now you can't reference that either? It's like, fuck that shit. Yeah, like, the Tony thing, I think they could have kept going without mentioning Tony, but they... Made happy so much, but part that's of his that's life. the thing. Like when you get like, happy, in happy's there, dating Aunt May. I mean, or Nick Fury. You start establishing that Nick Fury is now going to be like the, not necessarily the Tony Stark, but the counterpoint now, mm -hmm. the guy that gives him the missions, if you will. Yeah. So you can't even do that now. But I think they got a lot of slack after, like, yeah, Kevin Feige is going to make a Star Wars. I'm like, whoa. He's too busy to do a Spider Man, but he's going to do a Star Wars. Yeah. And like what? Two or three days later, yeah, we're doing. It was fairly again. quick. It was fairly quick. But, but he like, also mentioned, though, he also mentioned that Spider Man is the only hero in the MCU that can cross universe, cross cinematic universes. Yeah, 
Which basically means there's more to this than just, oh, we're doing a couple more spots. They're going to let him be in Venom 2, probably. They're gonna, he's going to jump universes. There's, you know? There was concessions made because, yeah. like, cause like, we talked about it. Disney was like, no, 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 we'll put up half of ours, yeah. and then we'll make half the profits. Mm-hmm. Well, now they'll put up 25%. Yeah, so they've gone up to 15, no, 20. Were they 5 or 10%? They were 5 Five. No, but there was uh, Sony put up their own money. Yeah. And Disney would get five percent of the first day gross. Right. Gross, and then that's it. And now they're getting twenty five percent. Now they're getting twenty five percent of the first day gross. Yeah. But they're also putting up twenty five percent of the uh, the post or their own money. Yeah. Okay. They're still getting a hundred percent of the merchandise crap. Uh, merchandise though. Mm-hmm. That'll never change. I just I, I love that MCU crazies that are all like yeah. Fuck it. Suck that, Sony. We knew you'd give in. That's like... I don't think people really realize that Sony is an enormous company and do so much more than just make movies. It's not even just that, though. I don't think that they want to admit... Yeah. Okay. The MCU crazies don't want to admit that it's actually good to have a partnership like this. Not... One company that has all these characters. That's why, like, when this whole Fox file thing was happening, I was like, I really hope that they just kind of do an agreement thing. Because I wouldn't mind seeing X-Men in their own, doing their own thing, especially with Deadpool. Deadpool's the biggest one where I'm like, D- if you love Deadpool, you're not going to like MCU Deadpool. Yeah. you're Because, like, that uh, PG Deadpool 2 that they did, mm-hmm. That bombed hard. That hardly made any money. And why would it? Yeah. I mean, like... It's like, why would I watch the watered-down version of what I just watched that was awesome? Yeah. yeah okay, Fred Savage, that's cool. Oh, that's that's all well and good. But I'll just watch that clip on YouTube later on. Yeah. After that, <laughs> then I don't need to see anything else because why would I want to? That's why I never understood, like, why people were so excited... For X Men to be in the MCU, yeah, finally X Men's in the MCU. Fuck you, Fox. Now you're never going to see the X Men. Yeah, like freaking Brie Larson just said in an interview the other day that I have no idea what Captain Marvel's going to be like. Exactly. So, as a Captain Marvel fan, wouldn't you want to see it every? Can you years imagine of- literally being told that Captain Marvel is going to be like the new benchmark franchise? Yeah, and then all of a sudden they're like. Uh, you might get your movie in Phase 5. Yeah. But maybe not. Your because... movie's just made a billion dollars, but we're going to put you on the shelf for four or five years. Yeah, because we're, uh, we're also talking about bringing in uh, Nova. Mm-hmm. And bringing back Thanos because of, uh, because of that whole thing. Yeah. We also got to bring in Fantastic Four. They're, they're on a big push for Fantastic Four. You can see it. Big push the, for the push in the comics is me going, oh, okay, the movie is yeah, coming. Big push for Fantastic Four. Uh, well, there's a big push for the X-Men in the comic books. I don't feel... They're pushing in the comics because I think they're trying to get it in a direction where the movies can adapt it. In, that a, makes in sense. a way that will be different than what how Fox did it. Okay, so, and that makes sense too because cause like when Feige said like it'll be five years out before an X-Men movie... Minimum five. I'm inclined to... Uh, believe that. I'm actually yeah. inclined to believe that because you have to leave it far enough so that all the memories are out, right? Because mm-hmm. that was one of the things, like, when they talked about rebooting Spider-Man so soon after Amazing, even I was like... That's quick. Whoa! Okay, and I'm not a huge fan of Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 by any means, yeah. but I, even that, I was like, oh, What was it, like shit. a year and a half between Civil War and Amazing? Like it was quick. It was. I want to say a, you, I might be right. I don't think it was year two and a years. half. No. I don't. If it's two, I'd be amazed, but I don't think so. No, it wasn't. It's Never amazing. mind the yeah. fact that I was amazed that like there wasn't that far between Spider Man three and Amazing Spider Man. Yeah, I think it was a four year difference there. Still. Yeah. That's not, in my opinion, like when they were talking that's about quick. Like, yeah, I no, was like, that's too soon for a reboot. That that's like the that's amount of time a too- sequel would. Use. Exactly. That's kind of where I'm at, right? Oh, sequel time. Oh, it's a reboot. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. But then, I mean, yeah, I want to say a year and a half. And next thing you know, they're like, Spider-Man Civil War. You're like, whoa, what? 
Because Amazing 2 was 2006. <clears throat> Civil War is 2017. Yep. And then Literally next year. 2018 was... No, 2017 was Homecoming. 17 was... Sixteen was Civil War. Oh, 2015 was amazing. 2016 right. was Civil yeah. War. And then Home 2017. Was yeah, right. and then it's uh, that's Endgame. right. Or no, then it's Infinity, Infinity War, Endgame, Endgame, and then Far From Home. Yeah, oh, every right. single year. But yeah, so uh, to reiterate, I was right. I called it. You were right. Fucking shit. Um, however, right. oh, and then like the new agreement is uh, one solo movie. Yeah, one tie-in to wrap up his story. That's right. That's right. Here. So one tie-in, one solo. Where they go from there? Whether Sony's going to pitch Tom Holland to come over and do movies for them, or if that's going to wrap Tom Holland as Spidey? I feel like it's going to be kind of an open-ended wrap. Yeah. Okay. Like I feel like they're going to. Actually, to be honest, I almost don't want to speculate because. There's still a lot of moving parts, because like if we talk about switching dimensions, so then we would say that Venom is a different dimension, right? Mm -hmm. An alternate universe, we'll say. So then we would ha now have Tom Holland's Spider-Man shipped off to that, mm -hmm. okay? Which works, because then like there's no mention of Spider-Man, there's no hints of any other superheroes or anything like that. I don't think they make any references to uh, the snapping or whatever, you know what yeah. I mean? So you could do that. And it also does an easy out for uh, the identity thing. <clears throat> the drawback is, is it can't just be Peter Parker and, and Spider-Man that goes. It's got to be his cast of characters. Right? So then, that's jarring because, or unless it's just Peter Parker, and then he just, because it's an alternate dimension, it's just different versions of those characters. Yeah. Which is, okay, all right, fine. Bit. That'll be fine. It'll be a little bit of a different uh, spin on some of these characters, or not at all. And we just yeah. pretend like it didn't go over. I don't happened. understand the like. But like, yeah. But then, if we talk about maybe renegotiating, and now we get a few more movies in the MCU, then you have to go through that whole like dimension hopping thing, right? It's. Uh, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. My gut tells me that. I honestly, my gut tells me that we'll be. It'll be a long time before we actually have no Tom Holland, Peter Parker in the MCU. I really believe that. Yeah, they're saying one in, a, in an appearance. I, yeah, I think they'll re renegotiate. Uh, re negotiate. Negotiate. Yep. There's the word. I feel like um. it'll just be one of those things where they'll renegotiate. Or maybe, because like, Sony's not stupid. They're not going to sell rights. No. They're not stupid. Same reason why Universal still has one. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That seems to be more petty. <laughs> it almost seems like they're just like, no, it's mine. Yeah. When, why wouldn't you? No, we paid for it. We're keeping it. And do what? We'll give you four times the amount of money. No. Yeah, like, I don't know. I mean. So it sounds like Neymar is coming to Black Man. So, that's cool. That is really cool. That's cool. It's weird that they would let the rights lapse on that one. Well, they have, well, Universal owns the rights on Disney. That's what I mean. So this, they, they can't do a solo movie, so they're going to have to introduce him with Black Panther. Oh, I, I understand. Yeah, that's right. It's it's the same thing they do with the Hulk. Yeah, that's same right. thing. That's fine. Like, I mean, even just the, the teams with the... Uh, in was Endgame. Yeah, in Endgame. Yeah. Where just they, that they little, that that little that. all the like, oceans are rising around here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so needless to say, I was right. Um, this is right. But I do feel that... The proposed ending of their relationship, I don't think it'll ever happen. But it's hard to say. Actually, to it's be honest. It's going to be one of those things where it's looked at every few years. Yeah. It'll be on a case by case basis. Yeah. I think uh, the biggest thing will be uh, a big, big linchpin will be how long Tom Holland wants to do this. That's the linchpin. When he goes, I think I'm done, then and Sony might as well just go, all right, well, Spidey's coming home. Yeah. I th and I think that's kind of where they. That's yeah. where that'll happen. Because, yeah. like, because I feel like Holland will do one more trilogy after this. I, like, I, I don't... I mean, he's young enough to keep going. He's young enough to keep going, and he's young enough to be able to age enough into the role to the point where you can do the trade-off to Miles. Yeah. Right? Because then, 
I feel like that's where you can kind of have your cake and eat it too, because then you can have a Miles led Sony only. Mm-hmm. You can still have kind of reference some things. Donald Glover would be the perfect age still to be Prowler. Yep, perfect, perfect. You know, we're talking like ten years old. Like, how old is Glover? Our age? About the end. It's about our age. Yeah. So mid forties, he can still be Prowler. Yeah, you Easy. could definitely, definitely do it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think that would be if it was me. That's how I would do it. Yeah. You know, and then like. Even if you get to that point where Holland's like, okay, like I'm, I'm good, mm-hmm. I'm done doing Spider Man. Um, although I kind of feel like he's gonna do Jackman and basically just be like, I'm too old to play this guy, so I'm a bow out. Yeah, we'll see. Well, we'll see, we'll see. But at least he's. I feel like he's got one more trilogy in him because he, for all intents and purposes, like he started at a young enough age. And it's successful enough for him to keep going. I it wouldn't be hard for him to, it's also, to top Hugh Jackman's record for longest running. It's also not prohibiting him from doing other movies either. No, you know, no, because like their contracts are very like very oppressive contracts. Yeah. Although I say that, and yet that movie that's supposed to come out uh, with him and uh, Daisy Ridley. Yeah, that is some problems or something. Yeah, yeah. like that's still just kind of like hey, was it Dunn Lyman too? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what. It, it, looks, it looks good. It sounds good. Yeah. Uh, what's the problem? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. It's. Uh, but. To say. That was again. a wonderful end to our horror episode. That's okay. The horror fans could stop watching right before all that. They probably Fuck did. Em. What are you gonna do? Come at me, bro. Probably hit you with a little fucking hammer in the head. Or they'll probably do this on our uh, YouTube. Yeah. Or wait, they don't do thumbs down anymore. Don't they? I, don't, I, I thought I read some. No, no, we have got down well, thumbs. I don't know why. American, American YouTube, I think, <laughs> got rid of the down thumbs. Anyway, regardless, uh, so thanks again for. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Number 52. Yep, of a million. Mm hmm. Number 53 will be a surprise. I don't even know what we're doing. So, it'll be great when I show up. <laughs> and yes, deep pants. <laughs>